started the show on time? No. No, I don't actually remember that. So, (laughs) anyways, now that we're ready to start, I'm going to go ahead and start. Welcome to Four Player Podcast. This is episode 348. It's don't don't look at me like that, Nolan. It's January 28th, 2014. My name is Nick Henderson. Brad Simons is to my right. That's me. Nolan Hedstrom. No, how's it going, guys? I wasn't sure if you were going to say it was to my right or not. No. I am technically... You are technically still to my right. Yeah. You're kind of around the circle there. And uh, Christopher Guthridge. Hey. Affectionately known as Crispy. Hey. There's less affection when I say it. I know. I wasn't speaking for all of us. It's kind of just a mean jape. (laughs) What? How is it a jape? When you say it. Why? I don't know. Because it's less affectionate. Oh, my lord. Okay. I say your name like it's an insult. Nolan. We have a lot to talk about tonight, guys. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and jump right into this. Thank you for joining us. Um, I think, hey, first up, as always, our our first segment of the show is going to be impressions. Brad's going to tell us about the Banner Saga. Yes. And, I'm interested. Uh, and Crispy has started playing Final Fantasy Tactics, I which have. is... Yes. Which would be interesting. I'm curious Hopefully to hear. you stick with this one longer than Castlevania. Have you officially oh, given up on right. Castlevania? I haven't played Castlevania. I forgot about it. <laughs> I forgot that was a How game. How do people do this? About it. I, uh, I'm going to spend about 30, 45 minutes talking about Final Fantasy XIII 2 later. So, the very yeah. I'm just I'm, that's a joke. I'm not really going to do that. <laughs> so that game isn't that long. No, it's definitely not. <laughs> Thanks. I'm actually glad that it's relatively short because I want to get through it. I have two weeks to get through it, or maybe a little over two weeks. So, and I'm going to do it. Mark my words. Anyways, Brad. Yes. What is the Banner Saga? What do y'all know about the Banner Saga? I, I saw I, I saw you playing it for a little bit, and you were a dude on a mountain holding a flag or something. It's all based on... That's probably a all. banner. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised it's... more of you guys aren't interested in this game. No, I mean, I, I, I don't... I just... thing is, my problem is I just don't know about okay. it. I don't I know anything about it. It's more of time. Just, yeah. No, but, but I mean, this is... Fun. That's this a time-consuming is... game. I've it's only so $25. Dollars, actually, it's I don't have, I don't have yeah. 25 This game's not long at all. I that's what I heard, Reviews are saying everyone's talking at the same time. So, Banner Saga. No, it's not very long. Okay. Reviews are saying it's like 10, 12 hours. Okay, that's not that bad. Um, which I think I'm already over that. So, hey, maybe it's all about in how I don't you even know what games. genre it's episodic, this is. Episodic, all right. Though, so, Tactics. Bear Saga, you might know it as one of the more successful Kickstarters that launched in the year shortly after, um, you know, Double Fine's um, mm-hmm. adventure game um, uh, that we're going to be playing tonight. Broken Age. Broken Age. Fuck, sorry. Did you forget the title? Uh, yeah. By the way, stick around <laughs> after the show. New release Tuesday tonight is going to be Broken Age. And if you're listening to this after the fact, you can catch it on YouTube. It should be up. So Banner Saga is um, actually the from Stoic Studios. They're here in Austin. Former developers of uh, from Bioware, maybe? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think every studio nowadays has someone from Bioware. <laughs> well, yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, so this is a... Um, So it's kind of like a strategy RPG, like your typical, like, say, Final Fantasy Tactics. Grid-based strategy RPG battles meets Oregon Trail. Hmm. More modern would be, like, FTL. Yeah. All kind of like the text adventure, like, select. Yes. So so this is a very narrative, but but unlike FTL, it's not different every time you play. This is a very narrative-driven game with a story where, uh, I I guess the setting is kind of Game of Thronesy, you know, where it's brutal and people... Medieval. And people die, and, and, but you re, but there's a there's a, a looming threat. Well, actually, it's, it's very much present where there's like this, you know, like like the others in Game of Thrones, if you will. Mm. But they're actually there, and people are kind of on the run from the them. others. They're, they're kind of just the others, the White Walkers, the White Walkers. In the book, they're called like Lost or something. Oh, oh. okay. I yeah. guess they're not called the others in, in, the, in show. the book. They're they're in the, the show Lost, they're called the others. Okay. Because well, no, not not like Lost, like Game of Thrones. Yeah. Fucking zombies. Okay, they're. In Game of Thrones, they're just zombies. Well, okay, they're not just zombies. But yeah, anyway, not, continue. Okay, so yeah, there, there are these. There's this constant threat. So they call it the Banner Saga because you're control. You're, you're, you're in control of a band of of these people that are are. You're bannermen. They're very Viking like, mm-hmm. but there's humans. There's two races. There's humans, and then there's, then there's these, um, these like giants. Like they're kind of half giants, and they have these big horns, right? Hmm. And and you you play as these two bands, like of, the dudes from Dragon Age. Yeah, they're kind yeah, of but kind bigger, of bigger. bigger. They're, they're, they're very, very bulkier. Yeah. And what's cool about them is in battle, they actually take up four squares instead of just one. 
So hmm. like think of that like Final Fantasy Tactics. Yeah. They're, they're very large. Uh, so yeah, you're there's like you, you control two different bands. One of them is like a kind of a you know diplomacy. They go around trying to reason with them, you know, patch up things. And the other one's just phys- like actually running from the dredge is what they call them. These zombies, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's the story. But because you're 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 constantly on a you're on like a a journey. That's where like the Oregon Trail elements sort of come in, mm-hmm. where you have these resources, you have supplies that you know day by day as you're traveling across the map, you see it ticking down, and your supplies are going down. And when you get to towns, you know you can spend your resources on buying supplies. But you know as you go across, uh, progress through the story, sometimes you have the opportunity to get more people for your band, for your army, but that'll that'll reduce the amount of supplies i mean increase the amount of supplies you use day by day Mm -hmm. so there's this balance of resources and you know people as you are kind of you know going along your journey and and during the journey you have those moments like ftl where you have to make like really really tough decisions some people even in chat called it the uh the viking dead (laughs) like the walking dead because like it's everything is very you know they set the tone early on like that that you know George R. R. Martin tone, where where like the main character of your band, who's actually a character in battle, one of your best characters in battle, just dies. Like like, like in the in the story. This is very early on, so it's not a spoiler. Yeah. Like after the first battle, he dies in the story. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just like, oh, by the way, he took a mortal blow at the end of that battle, and he's dead, and he's gone. You're, but you're like, wait, <laughs> that was like my best unit, and he was very important to the story. It just sort of sets the tone that this is the kind of game you're playing, and, and you come across these FTL like decisions. You know, like think about an FTL when you open up a, a capsule and it's like oh a guy pops out and he, and he cuts one of your dudes in half and now he's gone yeah and you're like no what what maybe i shouldn't have checked that capsule or whatever yeah. that's what this game's like so you're making those decisions and and it's really cool because because everything all the different systems in this game are so integrated that that like a decision that happens in like these organ trail moments will have dramatic ramifications of like you in battle because everything's really integrated like there was this one moment where there was a guy in in battles like after a battle there was a treasure cart and it, it would start to tumble off a cliff but he's one of those giant guys and he was holding onto a tree and holding onto the cart and you you're making decision what are you gonna do? Are you gonna go and help him lift it up? Are you gonna yell at him to hey just let, let it, go? it go? It's not worth it. Are you gonna try to knock the guy off that's like climbing on that thing that's pro- that's making it fall? And you have to make this choice. And I don't want to spoil it, but if you make the wrong choice, that dude who's probably your strongest fighter is gone. He's dead. He's <laughs> gone. <laughs> so it has huge ramifications on the actual b- combat side of this game. And it makes everything brutal. It makes everything tense. The stakes are so goddamn high in this game. Uh, so I told you, like, like one of the bands, because you control these two different bands, I'm assuming they're going to meet at some point, but one of them is kind of like a diplomatic mission, and these giants are, are kind of escorting this, this like, king, this future king, this human guy, but he's kind of, he's like Joffrey. He's a fucking asshole, right? Yeah. But he's actually a fighter in your group, and he's good. He's good. He has this unique ability that's super useful. So you get into these story-related like conversations, and and he's running his mouth, and you often have the option of like tell him to shut up, say nothing because you don't want to piss him off because again you want to keep him happy, or you can actually just knock him out. And, and like throughout throughout this game, I've just been putting up with this asshole, putting up with this asshole, and he's actually been fucking up situations I've been in because I've let him keep talking. So recently I was like, okay, I'm just going to knock him out just to shut him up in this yeah. conversation. And we got into a battle shortly after. And he happen. wasn't there because I fucking knocked him out. And I was like, shit, he's one of my best guys. Now, see, this uh, narrative fuck. decision affected my situation in battle and I was kind of screwed. That's what's so cool about this game. But let me just real quick into the battle mechanics Can themselves. you ever screw yourself over with a decision? Dude, I feel like Probably everything... Worse is such on thin ice that I feel like any wrong decision could really end up screwing me over. Because... Uh, I mean, I'm, not, I'm talking about, like, screw you over to the point where you can't continue the game. No, I don't think so. Bad. I mean, they give you a lot of guys. Uh, let me tell you, a, like, one more scenario that's really cool, because I'm trying to sell you on this game a little bit. Like, like one of the scenarios I come across is, like, is like you hear a guy in camp and he's talking shit about your cause. Like, what do you want to do? do you, <laughs> and, and I'm like, well... I'm I'm one of these giant guys. I, I'm kind of a Viking, you know. And the options were like, oh, just ignore it, or just take note for later, yeah. or, or or you know, pass him by and make your 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 presence like no, known. Like, yeah. dude, I heard that. Just kind of like, or like, or just fucking blindside him, and just wail on him, and be like, <laughs> you don't talk shit about our cause. So I did that, and like later on down the road or whatever, he reasonable. came up to me. He's like, dude, 
My bad. But I respect what you did. <laughs> and he joined me. He's a fighter in my crew now. He's <laughs> badass. Wait, so but because... if I didn't do that, he could have maybe, like, actually caused some dissent and, like, took a bunch right. of my fighters out of my band. So because you just randomly were just like, fuck you, and just, like, yeah. hit him, later on he came back and was like, yeah, I'm going to yeah. join you. And that didn't have to happen. That's it's really crazy. cool. Let me get into the but, combat but mechanics But all this stuff themselves. happens the same way every time? Like, if you pick, like, next playthrough, if you pick that same Probably. decision, yeah. that's how it'll go? Yes. Okay. Yes, it's not like, like, yeah. I, they're not random dice rolls. But, right. you know, I've kind of been struggling with it because is it worth it that there are situations of, like, I didn't really know what was going to happen at the tree <laughs> situation. Yeah. Like, I feel like there was no way, way of me knowing, but now one of my fighters is dead. I'm struggling to decide, like, is that really a good thing that it can have such horrible ramifications if I pick the wrong thing? I don't know, but it definitely, like I said, sets the tone. But right. again, in battle, there's some really interesting mechanics that I like to talk about. In Final Fantasy Tactics, you have health, you know, mm -hmm. when you go over, you hit a guy and he loses his health. When you get down to zero, he's dead, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's not just Final Fantasy Tactics. I know, exactly. It's, <laughs> it's, it's most, pretty common. That's it's just common. about every game. Every fucking game. But, but, um,. And you've been playing Final Fantasy Tactics, so you're a good person to talk to here. In this game, your health is your strength, also. Uh, so, like, if your health gets down really low, you're also really fucking weak. You know? So you gotta be careful, because... That also makes sense, and... It makes a lot of sense. It makes enough sense that it shocks me that no one's ever done exactly. that before. Exactly. But, but you have two stats. You also have an armor stat. And when you attack it, and your armor will negate you know, damage, you mm. know, that will get through. You know, if right. you have armor up, you don't... It, say, say, if you have... 10 armor and he has 18 strength and he attacks you because that's also his health eight damage will get through and that'll go right. to your health but but when you attack someone you actually have the option of choosing just attack their armor or to attack their health and, and, and it, it becomes like this thing of like well if i just attack his health only a, a little bit of damage is going to get through but but this guy's really good at damaging armor if i wait till next turn you know get his armor down then then this next guy's going to go i can like do a lot of damage to his health like next turn, right which would be really good because that means not only is he closer to death, but he's also a lot weaker. Yeah. So, so because because you have a lot of options with you know kind of how you like attack a dude, and there's also a lot of really cool specials and stuff. You feel like in any given time, th you, there's just a, a huge amount of possibilities, which is really good in a strategy game to where you know a game like Final Fantasy Tactics, you can get really comfortable and kind of do the same thing every time. Like I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get my ninja up there. I'm gonna double sword him, you know, and I'm gonna finish him off with my archer or whatever, and kind of do that every time. But in this game, because you have so many options and because you know the stakes are really high, um, you know, I, I feel like the fact like this system really you know, leads to, like, just a lot of things. The other cool thing, the stat they have is, is called Willpower. Now, Willpower is, 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 you know, a stat you can level up when you level up your dudes, mm -hmm. but it, it's this thing that that you can use it how you want, but it's a depletable resource in battle. What, what's really cool, it's like, you know, in a strategy RPG, you see your movement, you know, right? Right. But you can use Willpower to extend that movement and go a little bit further, but you lose a Willpower point. You only have, like, maybe five or six. Or you could do a little extra damage in an attack, you know, and use a willpower that way. But again, when it's gone, it's gone. Wait, is this something so, that replenishes between battles? It replenishes between battles, and okay. certain classes or characters might have a lot more than others, but but it, it, it again, it's another little mechanic that adds to a lot more versatility for what you can do in any given situation. Hmm. So so that so my approach to battle can be completely different from yours, which is really nice because, like I said, when you get comfortable in a strategy game like this, you kind of end up doing the same thing. In this, I feel like I'm constantly on my toes, just trying to survey the situation and really think about, you know, the best situation. It's like it's like in chess or something where mm -hmm. you, you have all these pieces you can move in any given situation. Mm -hmm. um, I also like how there's the option of at the end of a battle you could like like you like there's some some stragglers. Do you want to take a chance at like fighting a second wave? And it's a trade off of like, man, my guys are really weak right now. I think I could take them, but you don't really know yeah. if you could take them. So it's like this, but I'll get so much more experience and I'll level up. You really feel like the stakes are high, and but it might be worth it. It might not. Like gambling like that is a really satisfying thing, and it really fits the world and until you until you don't win until yeah. you don't win yeah how, do, you how, to, how does this, you how does the safe game. system work in this game is it safe system it's constantly auto saving mm -hmm. so like I, I i as far as i believe but but like when your dude falls in battle they don't die forever but they can get injured wait but, but it, they, they it, get injured and, and like it's like injured for like xcom style injured for three days so you have to travel without. before he gets up to full health you can use him in battle but he's he's gimped you know, so so you know you don't want your guys falling in battle because like in XCOM you can get into a situation where all your guys are injured and you can really be fucked in the next battle. 
there was even a situation where because you had to make a decision do you want to charge them do you want to like defend up in the city to fight them do you want to kind of like lure some of them out you're constantly making these these like like outside of battle strategic decisions right um and and that can affect like kind of the situation in battle and there's one option where i was like do you want to just question what to kind of run and fight or do you want to like hold up in the city and i was like well if i choose to to kind of like kind of try to escape they said well in this next battle if that happens if one of your guys dies they're gone for good that's what they suggested so i was like okay well i'm not going to take this option it's it just everything is really intertwined if there's anything i have negative to say about this game and you know the art is really incredible too like the animations are really smooth and the music is great it's it's i believe austin wintery the guy who did the music for journey oh yeah did, yeah. did oh, some of the music in this it game. is it is yeah, yeah it's re got really good music and um the only thing that that really really pisses me off is that in battle the the enemy and, and your guy alternate you know your guys and the enemy always alternates no matter what mm. so you move one of your guys they move one of their guys you move one of your guys they move one of their guys the problem with this is if you have six guys and they have two they still get to go every other turn mm. i've never seen that in a strategy game before and he, but here's why that sucks two guys can be just as effective as six guys because they're going every other turn like it, it's hard to really finish off some dude it's almost like numbers don't numbers don't it all, matter. It all, it's seriously almost like like numbers don't matter like there was a situation there's oftentimes situations where if they have three guys left and one of them is really weak that's a better situation than if there was just two guys left and that's bonkers to me because yeah. i've never seen a strategy game that's like that like the like uh there's a situation where yeah there was like these two archers and there was one guy that i weakened because i took his health down really mm -hmm. well. but i i finished that guy off and then every other turn that archer which i couldn't get to were just you know Shooting picking me off from you. afar yeah. you know and if i had let that guy alive that would have never happened because eventually it would his turn would have come up and i could have moved my other guys over to the archers when they weren't going it's just it's it's a really one thing, stupid one thing mechanic I that i hope they remove that i wasn't really fond of is the fact that you can't change the the angle your viewing angle yeah which you know sometimes it comes into into I would like to point out, as Big Baz and Chad has pointed out, you did say it is sometimes hard to finish off dudes in this <laughs> yeah. game. Well, for me, and I don't know about you. Maybe you're good at it. I don't have a lot of practice. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, turn I don't that around, Brad. Uh, good but, save. Good but no, save. No, like it's I, really I, frustrating. I, I watched you play it, and uh, quite a bit. And you know, one thing I noticed is because when guys get really close to each other, yeah, it, it's hard to tell like exactly what's going on because yeah. you can't change a camera angle. Yeah, I thought it was kind of silly. Mm, I guess. The other cool thing is there's this balance. Like, like when you go into battle, you, you're choosing from a big pool of guys to bring into battle. And and because of these different races, like, like that giant race, the Varro, they call them, like, they're really strong. Like, their stats are better than humans. So just, like, they're, they're good in combat. But they take up four spaces. So if you bring a bunch of Varro into a fight, like you really get into these traffic jam situations because mm. they're so big. They, they can't... It's like, God, my, my tank is stuck behind these two other fucking Varro and I can't get them through to actually soak up some of this damage. And you're just like, fuck. <laughs> but if you have like little humans, they can, they're moving all over the yeah, fucking place. That adds another element of strategy to it. Exactly. Got... And again, but again, you know, it's, it's the lore of the world, the race like very tightly intertwined into the mechanics of the battle like the the best thing i could say about this game is just how integrated everything is and how everything else affects each other like you have this resource for buying the actual supplies like the food for your band mm -hmm. um, that's the same resource that you spend to buy equipment for your characters like items like super useful items and that same resources same resource is you use to level up your guys Oh, so wow. it's this huge like juggling like do i want to level up this guy we might not make it to the next town before we run out of food if you run out of food mm -hmm. your band starts dying off which you know when you get into these war battles where you're more making these strategic decisions then you know you could you know like from what i gathered is when i'm outnumbered in like in like when my band comes across like a big group of dredge and i'm like making strategic decisions that if if they outnumber me when i get into the actual battle combat on the ground mm -hmm. like i'm going to be outnumbered and it's and that the actual tactical game is going to be a lot harder as well so hmm. but then wouldn't you be also taking advantage of the same little quirk in the system too where you would be taking more turns for less guys the, well 
Yeah, but I mean the the issue with that is when you're trying to clean up the battlefield, it just it's backwards and it doesn't make sense. But mm -hmm. you know, having more like there there are times where like like oh you made a right decision here, two hundred fucking varl join your band, right? <laughs> it but it's like your resources will deplete quicker. Yeah. So it's like, can I even like feed all these guys? You yeah. know, can you lead them to die? Yeah, yeah. It, it, dude, this is a really cool game. And if it wasn't for these, for like a little like annoying quirks, then it would be, you know, maybe one of the best strategy RPGs I've played in recent memory. But I think you guys would enjoy it just for the Oregon Trail moments that are just so fucking tense, and that you know the battle system's quality enough. Cool. Yeah. So. I highly recommend it. I would it really certainly like caught my attention this. when I saw you broadcast, broadcasting the other day because I had never really seen it. I just kind of heard bits and pieces of it, tuned in, and I don't mm -hmm. know, it looked pretty cool. Um, so, thank you, Brad. Crispy. Mm. Mm. Tell us mm. about Final Fantasy Tactics. Final Fantasy You started Tactics. playing this. Finally. I started, yeah. Um, I'm this, is after, the... this is also after weeks of us talking about Final Fantasy XII and whatnot. And yeah. Kinda yeah. Like, yeah, Telling, especially since because of your love of Game of Thrones, I feel like this would be a good fit for you. Yeah, and mm. the the storyline and like the world so far of Ivalice is very Ivalice. is very fitting with the kind of like uh, political tone of like Game of Thrones and yes. stuff like that. I mean, there there are all these like there are all these like kind of otherworldly threats going on, but it's also about like the politics between these nations. Like I I. Sp um, I, I was actually playing earlier today for a while, and I spent a lot of time kind of just reading through all the different, like, things in the tavern that tell you about the world and the people and, like, the, the governments, basically, that are kind of at play against each other. Well, governments, but, like, you know, like, these different nations that are kind of, like, going to war with one another, mm -hmm. and it, it's 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 really dense. It can be overwhelming. It, it is, like, really but it, dense. There's a lot to that game. There's man. a lot going it, on there. But you're going to be playing this game for a long time if you keep going, and it'll eventually, like, through osmosis mm -hmm. get into your brain yeah you'll start understanding kinda, like who everyone works, is right. being well hey. immersed in that world mm -hmm. kind of um and like i said like i was playing for several hours today and i'm still like only in the opening oh, yeah. section of the game because I've, I've been doing a lot of like leveling and stuff like that um i mean tactics games on the whole is something that i've kind of only recently taken a shine to like, I really, like, recently went back, like, I was probably, when you and I first met Nick, maybe within, like, a year of knowing each other, you recommended that I play Valkyria Chronicles. Oh, yes. And I started playing that. I was like, I, what strategy game did no, no, I recommend? No, yeah, Valkyria Chronicles, and I yeah. really liked it, and that kind of shifted my perspective on the whole genre, because I had tried playing things like Final Fantasy Tactics before, and I didn't really like it, and I thought, like, oh, maybe these games just really aren't Well, that's why me. I recommended it, because that was literally yeah. the game that shifted my interest, and I mean, I still, yeah. I still I mean, to it, this day like, don't play a whole lot of great Well, and that's, that's the thing, too, like, I, I, I even went, I was playing some of that within, like, or two days ago, I, I booted up and was just playing some skirmish battles on that, and it's, it's a really satisfying game to play. Oh, yeah. Um, but... You know, so recently I, I've been more open to playing tactics games, you know, but I've been playing more recent stuff. So things like Valkyria Chronicles, things like Fire Emblem. XCOM, things like Fire Emblem Awakening, right? And those were all great games, and I enjoyed each of them. Um, Final Fantasy Tactics, though, is definitely a bit more uh, monomythic, yeah. I guess, than those games are. It's just, it's just so much more intimidating. It, it, it's really dense. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, you came from Fire Emblem, and Fire Emblem is pretty simple. Yeah, I mean, it really, like, Fire Emblem kind of boils down to, like, a rock, paper, scissors <laughs> tactics game <laughs> compared bit. to, like, compared to something like this, you know? Absolutely. I know, um, I, know I, I get what you're saying when you say because, dense, because on more than one occasion, I have tried to play tactics. Yeah. Like, like commit to playing tactics, and both times I have, like... I've stopped, and probably I didn't give it enough time. But it is it is definitely kind of a daunting, uh, daunting game to it, approach. It is, but at the same time, like the more like the more I'm reading about it, and even just playing today, like just sitting, just giving myself a few hours to sit and like really kind of try to sink my teeth into it. Like I'm definitely coming around to it more, and I really really like it. And it, it's it's one of those games where like I want like I really want to like it, and I'm just trying to get my like minute-to-minute -minute enjoyment up to that level of 
Trying to maximize, it. This is very trying to maximize it's, it's, your return it, there. Because it's it's a very it's a really difficult game that's really punishing to newcomers because they're not I don't know, there's there's a lot going on with the systems. The job class system was a real big kind of hurdle. I'm kinda of starting to understand how that go how that fits and how that works. Um, but that was that was a huge shift just starting off. Because, you know, think when I was saying things like uh, you know, like Fire Emblem, for example, right? Or XCOM. You know, those are games where you have different units that have different classes. Um, but for the most part, those units kind of stick to whatever role you've assigned them. Mm -hmm. And you kind of progress them through a tree that maybe has one or two branches yeah. of different abilities that you can get. But they, they roughly stay within the same role type throughout the game. And in tactics, the whole like the whole depth of the gameplay comes in switching your characters' jobs around. Yeah. So all these characters, you know, you're leveling them, you're you're leveling the character themselves up, you're leveling up the job that they're doing simultaneously, you're using the experience you get for the job to buy new abilities, you're switching their jobs, but you're keeping old abilities from the job they used to have in in correlation with the new that's job. That's exactly they have. how Bravely Default like, works. That's too. how Bravely Default works. Yeah, that's how that job class system works. It's, yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean that's that is the whole thing about it, is that I'm just not used to job class systems. Oh, you they're know? awesome. Yeah, awesome. and it and it, at first it was really kind of daunting, but now that I'm kind of starting wrapping my head around how these different jobs and abilities can match together and how much flexibility that actually gives you, it's a really really cool idea, and I'm a little surprised that it's not more widely emulated nowadays. <laughs> like, hey, uh, hey, I'm right there with you. It's it's kind of weird though because like I, I mean I, I I get I get why somebody would want to make a game that's a little more opening to newcomers just to keep people from like running away from the game and being like oh I can't fucking do this because I was I mean they're showing footage right now of a battle that I was I yeah. think yeah the battle that I was doing earlier today and um, I didn't do so well in this fight but I got out of it okay. Actually, right after I played this fight, I did another fight that just went south super quickly, and I got so fucking frustrated with it that I just like rage quit and turned off turned off the game, um, because it's, I don't know. It, it, it's it's really frustrating to to like a game as much as you do, but then like hate it when you play it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> like it's it's fucking it's just a really weird thing to describe. You'll get, oh, nice. you'll get over that hump, for sure. That. Spoiler, by the way. Um, I'm very... Oh, he, he, he doesn't know. <laughs> Shut up. It wasn't a spoiler until you said something. It's it's funny, because Dummy. like I, I'm, I'm really having a lot of fun. I'm really into it um, so far. It's Again, there's just so much... I've only just scratched the surface. There's so much more that I have to like kind of get into it. There's a hump you'll um, get over. And, yeah. And, and, and you'll, you'll know when you get there when, like... Well... <laughs> When, when you're at work and you're thinking about like potential yeah, like just class like layouts like what's so cool about job class systems is just you have so many you know you just want to experiment you know mm -hmm. and and like man what if i go into this battle with just all five monks dude i'm gonna tear it yeah. up and you try it and you're like oh this is this is kind of works but that's it's why, nice having a that's like, why maybe you a, wouldn't do this yeah. yeah but but that's what's cool people like Final Fantasy, the reason it's so replayable is because you know, you can play this game with completely different classes and, yeah. what's, what's, and experiment. Like what's really combos. interesting about it, what I thought, what I was really frustrated by at first, but what is turning out to be something really interesting is the, the is how widely integrated the job class system is into everything. Okay, so even for example, like your units can't just use items; they have to have a job skill set from the chemist to use like a potion and then even then they have to buy the ability to be able to know how to use potions that, that so you can't even like you can't just like take a new squire type character put them in a match and then if they get hurt just say like oh we'll use a potion no they can't do that because they don't know how to <laughs> they, like that right there when i first started playing i i was so confused i was like why the fuck is this made this way but when you start when you start realizing how in, how interchangeable that makes everything, like how modular every individual character becomes, it actually becomes really really interesting. Um, and it's like you were you were talking about like the bug basically. You would ask me like, had yeah. I got the bug yet? Was I sitting there thinking about like different combinations of oh, of uh, of classes and stuff like that? And I and at the time I was like, well, no, honestly, because I really just don't even know. Like I don't even know the tool set that I'm working with yet. And I, I, I'm, I'm picking it up a little bit more, but I'm still just like... 
there, it's it's really really dense. <laughs> going back to that, what, kind of what you said about how everything is is so interconnected without even realizing it necessarily. Mm-hmm. It's kind of what I'm learning about Persona as I'm as I'm playing more of that because I said I said this in my my stream journal mm-hmm. the other day, but like that that game I always kind of thought of as there is a social aspect to it and there is like a combat RPG aspect to it not realizing that, they that, just, like, that they, I thought there yeah I thought there was yeah. gonna be people who like really like it for this and there's some people who really like it for this but in fact decisions that you're making like the, the your success in combat is directly correlated to things that you're doing socially that enhance your, your stats unlock the ability to make connections with new personas and grow your grow your personas and, and learn new abilities and whatnot mm. so it's like everything is actually just, it's actually one system when I thought it was two yeah it's just two different pieces of the same system that are really d- unique and different which is cool it's awesome and it's been a long time since i played an rpg that's kind of ha- been that like com- complex which is that was probably a, why i'm enjoying yeah, it that was a pretty amazing natural transition but one more thing <laughs> so, let me transition it back you, i know you say maybe you're not thinking about it like right now which you would be if you well, had the bug no. but but hey hey when you get your archer to level three, you can unlock the thief. The thief can learn move plus two. But you know, but here's the thing. <laughs> huh? Move plus. Imagine how awesome your monk would be if he could move two extra if spaces. Could, if he could be super quick and mm-hmm. like just run around and punch mm-hmm. people, that would be really cool. But see, I, I haven't even used a monk yet, so I don't yeah. even I don't even understand that. They're, but they're strong. When when you're talking about like when you're talking about it kind of being stuck in your head and thinking about it all day. Right now, I'm not really thinking about the gameplay, I'm not really thinking about the systems, but I'm thinking about like the world, and I'm thinking about the lore, and I'm thinking about the characters, all of that stuff. I mean, it's it's not just the systems that make this game really interesting to me. No, it, it, this it's, is it's the all, full package. It's, it's is... all the trappings around it yeah. as well. Like, I mean, for that Final Fantasy Tactics poster right there, mm-hmm. you know? When I'm thinking about playing this game, I'm thinking about images like that. I'm thinking about all these different, like, brightly colored characters that all have their own kind of personality that's, that's displayed okay. in oh, their character it. design. Like banding together as a unit and like fighting this war basically, and it's it's a really, it's an even more interesting concept than to me than something like even say XCOM, which XCOM is really cool, but like everything about it seems really generic in comparison, yeah. you know? No, I mean this it's a great fuck like this game is my favorite game of all time, not just because I'm a systems guy, but because like the world and the characters are legitimately great. You're gonna mm-hmm. like. Um, you're gonna come across characters that are just like, dude, like, like this isn't these aren't like the hammy villains in other Final Fantasy yeah. games. These are, this is like fucking a Song of Ice and Fire. This shit is, like, this villain is a great fucking character. Oh, like, yeah. there's people like that. In like, this they're game. not just evil, but they're also interesting. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. And that's what I love about not just Final Fantasy Texas, but most Yasumi Matsuno games are like that. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm I'm really really enjoying it so far. I'm I'm a I, little trepidatious about my choice to play this game for the first time on the stream because it makes me dude, dude, just, incredibly self conscious. This is a but, yeah. huge game. But just play it off the feet. It, but, it like, is, like, yeah. and, then, and then when it comes around the Wednesday, you know, you play where you yeah, are a little bit. You know, because okay. maybe maybe don't play Dorder Trade City. Maybe it's good that we're doing subscriber game night this week this instead weekend. of crispy cast because. You don't want people to watch you do Door to Trade City, <laughs> you know? I feel that way, too. I mean, like, oh. earlier today when I was playing, I was doing a bunch of grinding, and everything was going great, and I was really, it was clicking, and I was getting the hang of it, and I'm like, oh, yeah, this is great. I'm just doing these couple grind battles over and over again. And then I started recording for tonight's podcast for the footage that Chris has been running. And that chocobo um, that was almost dead decided and, to fly and away that, and heal. And then, like, I go back to that fucking field, the um, Mela... Mandalia. Mandalia field or whatever and I just so happened to get like two chocobos in the same encounter mm-hmm. and they just fucking mm-hmm. picked me apart mm-hmm. and it was terrible <laughs> yeah just um yeah first 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 and last rule of Final Fantasy Tactics first are you, are you keeping Fantasy. more than one save file yeah thank god okay. okay also when you go into a castle and it says you're gonna do like more than one battle mm-hmm. like don't don't Separate save file for the love of God, because a long time ago on the show he talked about his friend playing Final Fantasy Tactics, and he got to this point. And I already knew exactly what the point was before he even told me, where he had only had one save file, and he got into a situation where he couldn't get through it. 
and it happens to a lot of people who, who only have one save file and if you can't get past that really hard one-on-one -on -one battle that he was stuck on your game is done me what? no oh, you, you had, had a friend. friend you had a friend and, and, and you were you were, At one point you you were asking friends. me like is there is there any way to get through who this who was that friend I don't know I'm trying to remember who I remember who, I never I remember who it was remember. a Riavani's cast hmm yeah interesting hmm huh. Oh, man, you you kind of moved on from talking about the job class system again because I was gonna try another really smooth transition, but then I kind of stopped myself because well, I was, this is a great transition I know, right here. <laughs> I know it's terrible. <laughs> it's the best. But you gotta you gotta be honest. That first one I did was pretty damn good. It was all right. Yeah, it was all right. It was good until you mentioned that it was a transition. I well, just kind of wanted to talk about speaking of segues. Speaking of segues, <laughs> I don't want to talk about Final Fantasy. The president of Segway <laughs> died on a segue. I. <laughs> I played Final Fantasy XIII and finished it this week. I just want to put that out there Jesus because we're Christ. talking about job class systems. Oh, Nolan can't be. The, he can no longer say that he's the only one on the podcast or on the site that. I'm the only one that did it without a guide. I did do it with a guide, <laughs> but for good reason. I have to get through that shit fast. Although there was, there were two things that I learned about that game from jumping back into it that I, I don't, I don't remember if I. Maybe, I feel like I didn't know this when I first played it, but it's been so long. Maybe I did. But you can fight any any battle in that game, fail, and then select retry, and it will start you. It'll put you back in the world just before you end just that battle. Just before the battle. It is impossible to lose, like, hours of grinding. Mm -hmm. Correct. Which I was kind of a saving grace for, for that game <laughs> right now. It's probably the only reason I didn't, like, rage quit, because there were quite a few times, even during this, this recent... Jump that was one of the things I liked about it. It got me. It got me yeah. through it. I, I I could literally go into a fight knowing that like there's a good chance I might die, but on the off chance that I win, well, I, mean, I it, win. It, it, not, it almost gives you a good you know judgment of how difficult that battle is. You go and you lose horribly. It's like well, well, I'm not gonna try that again. Yeah, well, I'm, just gonna, I'm gonna retry and then back the fuck up and go. Try exactly. And we, 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 talk, we talked about this when we when I first when the first, when the game game first, first came, came out. out. Yeah. But because because of that leniency. It lets them really ratchet up the difficulty oh, in which, battles, which, which is great because now because most RPGs, you know, you you're fighting much of fodder, then you get to a boss who's hard. But in Final Fantasy XIII, every fight can be difficult because of the way they do that. Which I do like a lot, and and that game, I will One say, of the few good things about. That I will game. say that game. I, I I feel like my I don't want to say sucks because the the battle system in that game, while. It was it was it was a lot legitimately of really liked the battle system. it was legitimately something very fresh as far as the way you approach. It battle. was an interesting idea. I mean, it is it is it is technically a job class system, yeah. quote unquote. I found it very a very interesting approach to be switching around. I would, roles. It's different. I would you're, call you're it less of a job class system and more of a this is my current position. Like yes. this you're, is there's less you're, there's less micromanaging of the combat and more macro managing you're you're just controlling the overarching roles that each person in the party is playing, correct which i liked a lot i will say now having seen how that whole like story pans out this game doesn't even come close to like capturing the like the narrative magic of any of the previous yeah. top fantasy i thought you were going to say it doesn't come close to making sense <laughs> no no <laughs> well, that's it doesn't. true it really does the story's pretty and, bad and, and and I think a lot of that has to do with the language they chose to use, like the uh, yeah. like Le like Le 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 like, like what the fuck is all that shit? And it's very confusing. It's very confusing, and literally like the last cutscene of that game, or the last like you fight the final boss, and there's this crazy cutscene. Something like the big field, like that. No, kinda... before the big field, like before, like before you actually fight the final boss. Uh -huh. I didn't. I didn't... Isn't it? In... Hold on. Isn't it embarrassing? That when referring to Final Fantasy XIII, you can say the big field. Well, I'm not. And people no, know no, exactly what no, you're talking no, no, no. about. He's talking about. I'm not talking about, talking about the about open the area. Yeah. There's a big. There's a cutscene at the end that takes place in a big open field. Oh, okay. no, no, no. There's. But you see what I'm saying, yes. right? Yes. Oh, the the the, the big part. That, the part one, where that open. one open part. That one, that one open yes. part. Yes. I just so, want to run around the land all day. Yeah. Yes, it's ridiculous. <laughs> I saw her on the cover of a magazine recently, <laughs> and it blew my fucking mind. I will say. All right. The my hands. The yes. Come on. I'm glad they put that in the game, though. <laughs> I was one of the biggest supporters of that. <laughs> I don't they, fucking know why. Yes, you um, were. But the like the cutscene that plays right before you fight the final boss. I had no fucking idea what was happening. Yeah, no, like, it's, it gets very confusing. Like what the fuck? 
I didn't even have any idea what was happening after the boss fight. The only thing that kind of made sense was the very end where they're actually that, that scene in the field. And I was like, okay, nothing before that makes any sense. I still have no idea what's going on. No, like when, when I had gotten to that point of the game, I was like watching it and I was like, yeah, I'm going to finish this game. Because <laughs> I had no idea what the fuck they were talking about. Yeah. Like, it is not easy to follow whatsoever. Um, and, like and ending of Final Fantasy I don't even know. I don't, I don't, I don't know also. where they went wrong, though, because while the other Final Fantasies were certainly, like, had that penchant for, like, being a bit out there, a there. Bit out there like, this takes it to a whole other fucking level. I mean, one of, like you said, one of the big things is there were different parties with similar names. And that, that gets yeah. confusing. Big, and also, my, the, my biggest problem with the combat in this game is that, su- like, the summons, like, traditionally uh, yeah. for me, Final Fantasy has always been about, like, I, like my favorite part about combat was, like, unlocking summons, summons and using them in battle. Yeah. I don't know, I've ten. always loved that. Yeah, it was great. Summons, Actually, being, summons being tied ten, to each character in this game kills it, because that means you can only use a summon when you switch out your party leader with another character. But no, I don't so, have enough so faith in what, my what, other party what, what members. What Nick is saying... Is, is it most final, almost all Final Fantasy, well, not all, I guess. It most the summons are tied to a person when you're in battle. You can't change who summons what once you're in battle. Yeah. But in Final Fantasy, thirteen, since you only control the main party leader, yes, you have to determine what summon you're going to use before you go into battle because you have to choose them but as I, your party leader. I never leader. used any other summon other than Odin because I didn't want to control. I didn't want to control any other character in that game. That's kind of other silly. than Lightning. I didn't. I really it's didn't. Silly. I didn't like any of the other characters in this game. You didn't like like Fang, but they're not I like Fang. In a, I like they're Fang just, in a combat you're doing sense the because same thing. I liked Fang she's in a, a combat fucking sense beast. because she's a fucking beast in yeah. battle. But other than that, like I didn't really want to control her. I mean, yeah. she was a fantastic Sentinel, and the, okay. controlling Sentinels not that much fun because they're there, they're there just to absorb well, they damage. absorb damage. Yeah, that's the point it's of all them. Timing. Yeah, yeah. So, anyways, that that. Yeah, yeah. I finished that and I jumped straight into Final Fantasy XIII too because I'm actually really excited about the changes and stuff they're making to, to Lightning Returns, which is coming out in mid February. Mm-hmm. And you play the game as Lightning, which is like the only character in the game I actually legitimately liked. So I'm looking forward to that. But like, I jumped into the XIII too. You like Vanilla? No, I hated Vanilla with a fiery fucking passion. <laughs> what about Just, Hope? Oh, God. <laughs> he is. Hope is like what about for me? snow? Yeah, you didn't for like me? snow. They're all fucking terrible. Hope, Wait, fuck. <laughs> these are all characters. Yes, yes. Those hope are all characters. for me is the character in The Walking Dead that you uh, fuck. Duck. duck. Hope fuck is duck. my duck. I fucking <laughs> yeah. fucking hate. They're hope. all fucking terrible. No, in they're fact, all really. Bad. I think the only character in Final Fantasy Thirteen that's actually kind of normal like, and human is Saz. Yeah, Saz is the best character in my. He's opinion. he's he's a good character. He's a, the only decent character in the whole fucking cast. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's he's a black guy with an afro and oh, there's a chocobo ask, that's like in his there, afro yeah wasn't there a character that like a lot of people thought was kind of like a racist character yeah that's <laughs> that yeah. Saz. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I like really, he was a really good character though. i liked lightning I like, and i liked saz probably Zaz, zaz has more personality than lightning oh but, yeah. lightning's just like a yeah <laughs> um <laughs> we should go Anyways, <laughs> she, she. I understand why you could like her, but she is pretty boring. You can like her because you can just impose whatever personality you want. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. So I, I started playing thirteen two, and I'm noticing some things that I really like. But so this game has like a like a straight up Nina Cooney slash Pokemon aspect to it. You're collecting yeah, you monsters, collect monsters, and yeah. you're adding them to your 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 battles. Like you're adding yeah. them to your party, and after you add them to they're your party, they're kind of like summons. And then you can you can le- like similar to Nina Cooney well, no, where you just go around and they're collect not like them. summons because they're like um, well, yeah. not like Final Fantasy thirteen summons. Yes, no, no, no. But you you add them to your party, and in like in thirteen like proper, you have paradigms that is different arrangements of your of your job classes, right? And you switch those out. So you add these monsters to your party, and then they also have their own paradigms as well. So it's more like Shimigami Tensei Nocturne. Sure, yes. but I never played that, so I can draw that comparison. Okay. That's a good comparison. It's actually pretty interesting. I'm liking it. The game certainly is more open. There's actually people like to talk to, and you can do quests for people. Like, at e- each of the environments that I've been in so far has been vastly more open, or at least with different paths you can take and stuff, which is nice. But like the changes they made to the Crystarium, everyone else said they like liked a lot. I'm not a big fan. Dude, the... It- what How could it have gotten worse? The Crystarium in 13 is fucking awful. I'll tell you why. Because what? there's only one. Oh, and God. there's only one Crystarium shared among all your job classes. All you do is you dictate when you go from one bead to the next, 
you dictate which class you're going to unlock you're going to tie that bead to so like the next bead is 150 experience points to unlock regardless of whether you're putting that into medic or synergist or commando or ravager and it just unlocks the next ability in that class so you're just moving down this like what? even more like before you had six different crystariums correct now you have one and it's just going in one I just maybe it branches you know off what? later. I don't fucking you know. You know, I don't mind. I don't mind that that shit is more. Sh you know, it was such a clusterfuck in thirteen. Yeah, it was. proper that that you know making giving me let you know what it it, it can't only, get worse. It can't I'm get only worse. four hours into this game, so maybe I have I haven't gotten very far in this crystarium. So maybe it branches out in ways that I haven't seen yet. I'm the, just saying I'm not a huge fan. I actually at the point that I'm at right now, which is only about four hours into the game. I prefer the Crystarium of 13 to this one. But I'm still pretty good. When are they going to bring back the Sphere Grid? You could also... Never. You're probably that was not that so far. good. The thing the is... Sphere Grid was cool. that, but I, you're probably I, not that far, but you eventually you'll start being able to put like accessories on your monsters, like yeah. little hats and stuff. Yeah. Nah. No, and you, you can give them like identifying marks, like tattoos and like accessories <laughs> and shit. It's, it's weird. I don't know. Dude, I just want a bomb with a hat. <laughs> <laughs> like, a, like a top hat? Wait, can you get a bomb on your team? Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure you can. You can Does he get any, bigger as any he takes damage? I've only, I'm not very far, but well, like I mean, the, any, any like monster you fight. Yeah. Does the hat stay bomb. the same size yeah. as he gets bigger? <laughs> You're asking me questions That's I don't so know the answer to. Good. Sorry, right, so maybe he gets I bigger and the hat's the same size, so it looks super <laughs> tiny exactly. on him. Exactly. Ah! <laughs> Anyways, I just wanted to bring that up. If I, that I were true, I would play that game. I ended up talking I ended up talking about this more than I anticipated, but I am enjoying it more than I did 13. That's not kind of, hard. And you're being. I, I know no, you like no, to poke at it. Everyone has said that 13 2 is better than 13, pretty much. Yeah. yeah there are things. There are things about 13 I like. I genuinely like. You know, I just think it's really misleading or really. It was really unnecessary to call that a Final Fantasy game. You know, if that had come out with any other name, it would have been a pretty good RPG. Well, hey, you know, back in the PlayStation One days, they would actually come out with franchises and call them different things now they just call everything final fantasy because it sells better that way until they realized recently that it doesn't and then they said well let's not call bravely default final fantasy let's call it bravely default so that can be its own thing and they're kind of going back to the way they used sure. to do it yeah but but um i will say this one thing that is way worse in final fantasy 13 2 mm -hmm. than 13 is again i didn't play this game but i played demos and i've seen videos there, that there's this dude in this game who's wearing an <laughs> outfit that's like straight out of Kingdom Hearts. Dude, and dude. Looks yeah. so stupid. What's like yes. the outfits got worse, way worse. The outfits got Kingdom Hearts as well. Yeah. Happened. Oh my god, I fucking hate Kingdom Hearts so much. Okay, I know you hate Kingdom Hearts. Not everybody hates Kingdom Hearts. With everybody, your fiery passion. Everybody fucking but. grown up hates Kingdom. Hearts. I'm sorry. I'm Thanks. sorry. I like Kingdom Hearts. No! Bullshit! <laughs> people who like Kingdom Hearts have played all those fucking games. You're not one of those I people. Think, I think you like your memories of Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, I like Kingdom Hearts 1 a lot. Is that what you played? Yeah. Well, then you don't fuck... You're not even in this conversation. I, I played about... Like, Kingdom I Hearts played more than half of Kingdom Hearts 2, and then I got distracted by yeah, something else. Thank God. Hey, or you played half... 2 was really long. I know. Well, yeah. 2 it. was really I long. I can't remember the last world that I went to. 2 really sucked. Hey. 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 I'm, I, I just know that I'm one of those people who is really excited for Kingdom Hearts 3. I am. So, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I'll get excited too because there's that dream, you know, there's that, I'm keeping hope alive that maybe, you know, they'll just forget all the stupid lore. I, I, there is a good chance that they're going to they're gonna reveal at the end of this game that the character you're playing. I loved Halloween. That this man. character in Final Fantasy XIII 2 is actually a character from the Kingdom Hearts universe. Yeah, I'm just saying. He looks straight up out of Kingdom. That Hearts. was probably the main reason I decided not to play. Wouldn't that, game? that be a fucking weird like, like they did this crossover and now they're doing a reverse crossover? Like I don't know. That would be weird. But he straight up looks like a character out of Kingdom Hearts, which is yeah. I love the original Kingdom Hearts, and I also hate it because it's kind of a bad game in some ways. But I still love it. Did you ever beat Sephiroth? Yes, in the first one. Okay. All right. So, what else? Anything else? Y'all want to just bring up kind of off the cuff here? You've yeah. been playing a lot of I've been playing uh, a lot of Dark Souls. A lot of Dark well, Souls. I've also been playing a lot of Final Fantasy. XII. Dude, he's been playing Final Fantasy twelve while playing Dark Souls. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was playing. He's been well, playing twelve. He's been letting. I'm sorry. Correction. I was playing. I was playing he's twelve. Letting, playing the Last of Us. He's been playing Final Fantasy. You have Final Fantasy twelve every time I come. My to official room. game clock on Final Fantasy twelve is sixty seven hours. But he's only... Wait, but recently? Yes. Jesus Christ. Wait, my, wait, wait. My but... time with controller in my hand 
is probably more of like fifteen to eighteen oh, hours. Oh, you. No, it's because clown. It's because I, I, I constantly have the frame rate at three times, so the entire game is sped up, and then and that includes the game clock, and then also I did some like auto leveling. Of course you did. What what level are your guys? Uh, Sixty five. Oh Dude, auto. He is literally letting What's the game the play itself. What's the point of that? So I can finish it to make it easier. Yeah. Dude, I had to fucking do this. God, I forgot. You, you finished this game before. I finished it. Okay. Well, like, this is, this is our subscriber of the month's game, by the yeah, way. Yeah, and that's why I'm playing it, because, you know, NLH is one of our most frequent chatters. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, You don't have to chat. To be <laughs> no, you don't have to. You don't have to. You don't have to do anything you don't want to, chat. And um, But no, so, like, I completely fucking forgot. When you get to Arcades, which I forgot was a place, um, you get there, and this guy's like, hey, you want to take this... This taxi to the other part of the town, you're going to need to get me nine chops. And first of all, I'm like, what the fuck's a chops. chop? I still don't know. Like cuts of meat? Or... I guess. Like, nine I, 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 chops. I, I, no, I think it's, I think it's wood. Like, they call it like oh. sandalwood chops. What? Isn't this like a futuristic world yeah, or something? Yeah, it is. And so it's anyway, like he's Star like, Wars you're going to need about nine chops. And I'm like, okay, let me go get a chop. How do I get a chop? Well, you need to talk to this person. They're going to tell you a story. And then you <laughs> need to find the other person in town, which story matches that. And like, oh my fucking God, it was horrible. God, me, I don't remember that at all. Right? It took me like half an hour. That's because you not really. <laughs> but like, it took me like, I don't know. I'll look it up on the feed from when I played it last night. It took me way too fucking long to do it. And it was ridiculous. Is it required quest? Yeah, you can't continue until you fucking get it. Well, that is you the got... definition of required. Yes. But still, <laughs> it was frustrating. So anyway, less frustrating yet, at the same time more frustrating, I've been playing Dark Souls. And I've been really getting into it. Like since Why would you jump into the abyss, Nolan? I watched that clip. Why would you make that plunge? In a game like Dark Souls, why would you take a so jump? You Wait. see that I throw the fireball, and you can clearly see there's something flat. That yeah. it like hits. Sure. Wait, wait. Oh, wait, but abyss? you jumped in without the ring, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. And I immediately, well, not immediately. I kind of sat there for a minute, just yeah. thinking my thoughts, and with I his realized head, with his head in his hands. I realized that I had even if you if you if you watch the video, someone's like, "Hey, Nolan, what rings do you have?" I'm like, "Oh, they're curious. I have this ring. I have this ring. I have this ring that gives me more health. This one gives me more crits. This one is for the abyss and blah 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 and all this stuff." <laughs> and then as I'm sitting there, I'm like. The fucking ring was for the abyss. Mm. That was the abyss. Like I, I guess I didn't realize that was the abyss. It's like, what's the point of fighting that big fucking wolf if you're not gonna wear the ring when you jump into the abyss? Exactly. Jesus Christ. So anyway, <laughs> so I beat Four Kings. Uh, I fucking hate that no. fight. The, the 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 fight completely turned around as soon as I realized that they did magic damage and not physical. I know. So I just switched to a crush shield instead of my night shield. And the grass cross. Like yeah. second to next fight. Like, I I remember that fight not even having time to defense. It's just nonstop kill 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 kill. Yeah, kill pretty much. Yeah. yeah. You gotta um, you gotta stay on top of it. That's not a good boss fight though. It's, it's a pretty so tough one. Yeah. So yeah, so I fought them. You know, I started I started collecting much more dark uh, dark souls, Lord Souls. I went down into uh, demons Catacombs? demons. No, I oh, been there the yet. the demons dome. Have you been demons there yet? Realm demons realm. realm. Have you been there? Uh, no. Jesus Christ. So I'm like you fight ceaseless discharge. Uh, yeah, which apparently I Gross. fought the non bitch way. <laughs> Apparently, there's a way you can kind of, I don't want to say grief to them, but it? yeah, you can cheese yeah. them. And apparently, I didn't do that. There's this whole fucking area in that in this in the the game that I skipped by doing this thing with this covenant. Oh, was it the the dark forest? No, there's like the... there's like this horrible like lava area. It's towards the end of the game. Uh, I'm there. That's where that that's yeah, demons the, realm is lava. The demons realm is that the one that I skip? like if you if you give this chick like fifty humanity or th this one covenant fifty humanity. Just skip that whole area. Wow. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, it's the that's, the, the that's chaos. The, the um yeah, the chaos. The, the servants of chaos. Oh, if you yeah, give yeah, them yeah. a bunch of humanity, and they open a shortcut humanity, for you. By, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I know what shortcut you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, yeah. So I fought that. Uh, I didn't kill him my first try. But then, like, so as soon as you kill that creature, mm -hmm. it opens up the like the new area. Mm -hmm. And so you know, the beginning of the game, you fight the Tauros demon, right. and then not too long, they're pretty pretty tough. And not too long after that, you fight um, uh, what is that guy? K the not chaos. The what is the guy with the two swords? Quite like, No, not quite no, no, no. The oh, the, the asylum demon. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. You're no, almost there. Shut up. You're almost shut there. Up, shut up. Just shut up. It's uh, that that is the Tauros. That's no, nope, that's not the Tauros. The Tauros is the big guy with like the fucking sledgehammer. You fight on the. Oh, no, 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 the Capra Demon. Capra, Capra. Thank, thank you, the Capra Fuck. Demon. And so anyway, Tauros Demon and Capra Demon, 
those become regular enemies. Yeah. <laughs> and so, like, I look down upon this lava pit, and I see, like, eight Tauros demons. And I'm uh... like, what the fuck? <laughs> and then I go and fight them, and I'm like, that's not that bad. Yeah. But I'm like, holy shit, like, the, the bosses from earlier in the game become just enemies. Become, like, mobs. Because <laughs> you become, like, so so much more powerful that than you were. That actually happened at the end of Final Fantasy thirteen. Like, yeah, those, that's, those, that's, those, well, that's, like, that's like, earlier when, like, Early in game, you encounter like one of those knights, and they just fucking wreck you. And yeah. then you go to Anne Orlando, and they're like the normal enemy, and yeah. they respawn all the time and yeah. shit. Like, and so they, they, and it's not, it's not just that my weapons are more powerful; it's that I'm better at Dark Souls. My yeah. strategy is better. I don't want to say that because I've definitely been messing up a whole lot. But I mean, I've been, I've been. Let's fighting. not forget about the abyss. Yeah, I've been fighting these demons, and and like, and, and I've been doing really well. Like, I'm getting better at Dark Souls. Like, I fought the centipede demon, which I guess you skipped. No, you, you had to have fought him. Because I think it's, it's one of the Lord Souls you get. Anyway, I beat him on my first try. And then you enter this new area. And Jesus fucking Christ. There are all of these, like, giant demon guys. And they... I don't even... I, don't, I, can't, I can't describe them. It's like... They kind of look... I, I would say, like, like Yoshi. Just think, think of Yoshi, right? We're talking, are we talking about... Mario Yoshi or like the movie Ma- Mario, Mario Yoshi. Movie Yoshi. Mario Yoshi. Like so baby it, it, Jurassic it's very, Yoshi. very, they're very stout, but they're all black and they have a tail and like a tiny little head, like they shrink Yoshi's head down and all black and maybe about 40 feet tall. Oh, okay. <laughs> and they're fucking everywhere. Yeah. And so I'm like creeping through this lava pit trying to avoid these guys and it's just, oh my God. And then I, I fought, um... The, what was that tree demon? The, the fucking growth. oh that that uh, it's a lot that of was demons. a stupid fight. Uh, so, uh, the uh, pit the, de- every, the pit no. Uh, I feel hold like on, every on. enemy battle. Uh, that bed he's bed of up. chaos. Yeah, the bed of chaos. So stupid. Yeah. I love how every fight like, that you brought up tonight. Jumping. Yeah, Brad's been like, oh, that's a no. Stupid like, fight. dude, boss fights in in this series aren't necessarily like the highlight. Just, the the fucking. Like, like, well, really so, so that's the me. thing. Like, I, I, I defeat this this boss on my first try, enter a new area, one of the mobs in that area kills me. It's yeah, just like the, yeah. the bosses, it's not that they're more difficult, it's just that they're something you have to get past. Well, yeah. they, I mean, yeah. They, so they, you're pretty far they're in not, the game. Usually, yeah. because boss fights are usually, like, the cheesiest part of the game anyway, yeah. because they, they're they the they're the enemies that have, like, the most, like, telegraphed moves, and you have, like, very, sp- like, you know their move set, and you're like, oh, okay, when he rears up like this, he's gonna crash down and charge at me, so I'm gonna stand two steps this way and start attacking his hind leg. Like, it, it it becomes like the most monotonous part of the game, really. Like well, it's just the boss. The boss. I mean, fights. like I think a fight with like a black knight is more exciting than you that's, know. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Well, the, 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 boss the, usually the humanoid creatures are more exciting because they're usually I don't want to say they're more intelligent. They fight you like know? you fight exactly. So like you're kind of like it, it. They end up being sort of like any of those other games where you end up fight like like in Castlevania when you do that like clone fight or the like in doppelganger in, fights. Uh, I love in those doppelganger fights. fight or yeah. like in uh, in um, Ocarina of Time when you do the Shadow Link fight like yeah. they become more interesting because they're using the same skill set and the same equipment that you're using did, did you ever go into the painted world no that's so i'm saving that one just because i, I talked talk to people it's when i was playing did you get and the... they're not saying it's not hard yeah i have yeah. Yeah. that it's not hard to do or it's just once you enter you can't leave yeah you and i didn't want to i didn't want to do that quite yet so I, I just got to ash lake i saw you found ash lake, ash lake yeah. and i i killed the hydra yeah, uh, Dude, fuck that thing. <laughs> it's actually it. I don't get up to it. Time with yeah, that. get up. No, the, well, the, that's the, the worst part. The like, thing is, yeah. no. When you're far away, all seven heads will shoot a blast of water, and if you get hit by one of them, you're like fucked. Yeah. But like, if you could dodge them and get up to him, it's not that bad. Yeah. And that's what I didn't realize the first time I encountered a Hydra. Is I, you know, I got hit by that water blast. But once, like I said, as soon as you get up close to him, it's not that. It's bad. It's scary because you don't want to get too far into the water. Right. Yeah, 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 you're yeah. afraid you're gonna fucking like, fall in. Yeah. What Ash Lake is cool. It's not even a big area. It's cool just because it looks so amazing. Oh yeah, it look it looks phenomenal. Oh, the, but then I got fucking cursed. Oh my god, there was some there was some bullshit where like I've encountered so many of these fucking frog guys that curse. Oh, the basilisks never never the been cursed basilisks? once. Never been cursed oh, once. Oh fuck you! How cursing? Is I horrible. just kill them before they can curse me. Okay. So anyway, but I mean, I, are you fighting like swarms of them or like one at a time? I usually because one on one handle them easy. very well. I mean, but, dodge their smoke. But you never and then... get like backed into a corner and then like one of them starts coming at you and then another two come out of a hallway and then there's one that falls down off a ledge yeah, above you yeah, and yeah. then they're all just like, oh hey, what's going on? We're spraying curse gas in your face. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's probably the most tense moment I had playing Dark Souls was when I was in like that sewery area yeah, with the, the fucking frogs, the and I was just so, yeah. No, I never, I never got cursed. I've never been cursed once by a frog. Even what about the fucker in nope. uh, in Blight Town? That, nope. That, no, oh, you know. Oh, so, no, no, no. So, that's 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 not curse. That's, that's poison. Toxicity. That's yeah. Toxic, that's no, poison. The worst. That's I've been poison terrible. Before. But anyway, no, toxicity is worse than poison. Yeah, and yeah. so, well, I have plenty of of grass of the the the, 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 the yeah. purple oh, yeah, cloth or whatever. The grass. Yeah. And so, so anyway, so never been poison, and I'm seeing all these frogs, and I'm just doing thrust attacks because my thrust attack will kill them in one hit, whatever. And I go around this corner, and there's a frog, and for some reason, I just do a regular slash, and. The hitbox of the tree was about five feet out from where the tree ended. Mm-hmm. And so, tink, I hit that, and then curse, like, gas at me, and then I, bam. <laughs> yep. Those trees so, actually, I think right now I'm still cursed in the game, because I didn't have a, a pure... What do they call something stone? The, the pure, we can use the... Whatever. Any, what anyway. squares that have the on Yeah, yeah, anyway. But anyway, uh-huh. so I don't have them. But I got to the end of Ash Lake... And there's the dragon, and like you can enter a covenant, but like I don't know if I want to do that or yeah, not. I don't think I entered that one. Well, Dark Souls never never fails to. Uh, it sticks impress. with you, man. It like, really like, does. Do you feel like like you know every inch of that game? No, yeah, and so that's I don't great. feel like I know every inch, but I feel like I know way more than I did last time I played. So the first time I played this, I played on PS3. And oh, I was so familiar with this game. Like, oh, I knew everything. And as I've been playing it, the game won't stop getting bigger. Yeah. Like I'm like I'm like, Dude, where is this beyond, coming from? Beyond the world and beyond the mechanics and all those little neat little bells and whistles they throw in there. Like, have you ever done like any serious reading or like no. video watching on like just the story? No. Like the discussions I, I'm, I'm and like to. and like the collaborations that people have come together and said, like, okay, we think that this is the story of Dark Souls. Like it's fucking crazy like it's mind-blowing no no i understand like I've, I've done some research in the past i did but right now i'm trying to like play through it without that yeah and then i'm gonna do all the fucking research i want it's... and then i'll probably play it again but like knowing a, a lot more than i did the first yeah. time it's it's fucked it's just there's something about it like that everything that like 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 you like, think back to like a call of duty you played you don't remember every inch of that game yeah. you don't you know, you might remember some set pieces, but you don't remember like the physical, you know, geometry of that world. Right. You know, from like you couldn't, from it, you not, couldn't necessarily moment like moment. sketch a map of a yeah. layout of an area. Yeah, but like, but I remember like areas of Dark Souls, like for me, that I feel was like Ocarina inch, of Time, inch by inch, Ocarina, well, of time. Ocarina of Time, or like or like think about the the first level of Doom or something. Like mm-hmm. I, I could draw that out on a piece of paper right now. Th- that's what I feel like Dark Souls. Oh no, yeah, definitely. Does. I know. Like, I agree. It's like a sign of really, but it's impactful level design it's like i don't know i feel like with most games if you like really tried to steep yourself in it that deeply it would just kind of it would make the the whole experience a bit superfluous like it would just kind of become a joke but like with dark souls that's kind of almost what you have to do or yeah. what just naturally happens yeah, by playing the cool game about. like yeah but okay. uh, no and i uh, just real quick on brad what brad was saying there's so because you know so many of the community members have played the game and have oh, yeah. beaten it uh, whereas I haven't, but they, I'll be playing a game. And they're like, oh, here he is. He's here now. Like, like they it's all the know worst. what's going it's on. I know. I like, hate that worst. when everybody knows and you don't. Yeah, that's that's that's. The and they're worst. all saying daughter traits, Eddie. Yeah, <laughs> you're like, shut up. Like, oh, you have you done daughter yet? I don't even know what the fuck that is. Fucking like, mushrooms are dicks. <laughs> And yeah, we'll end big, on that note. Oh, like the big oh, giant little fat guys? guys? No, big ones. Oh, the big guys. Yeah. Uh, we'll end on that note. Uh, we we got to go ahead and cut the uh, the first segment. We'll be back in just a minute. On the other side, we're going to talk. We have a few really interesting news topics. We're going to talk a little bit about some some pretty uh, pretty good, or I guess that's debatable, but interesting news regarding the upcoming Thief reboot. Uh, we're going to kind of talk about our feelings regarding the new uh, Middle Earth Shadows of Mordor gameplay, and we have Brad's going to fill us in on some an update with his uh, or I say his because you're the one who got kind of. Champion, champion this game, uh, unsung. What is it? Unsung story. Unsung, unsung story. Unsung. That's hard to say. Unsung story. Unsung story. Uh, so don't go anywhere, guys. We'll be back in just a second. Also, stick around after the show, after the second segment. If you're watching us live, we're gonna be playing Broken Age for new release Tuesday. So don't go anywhere. show be 
begins now. It continues? Now? Resumes. Shit, fuck, shit, shit. Show continues now. And now Welcome back to the podcast, everybody. We have some things to talk about. There's I'm been... sorry, oh, that, God that must it. sound really stupid to people listening. Welcome <laughs> back to the podcast. I mean, the people who are listening to the podcast are only listening to the podcast. Thank you, Brad. Welcome back from what? The break. Yeah. There was music playing. Maybe they pause it. Like when I'm listening to podcasts on the go, if I if I'm listening and I'm kind of on the tail end of doing something and I come to a break and they start playing break music, I pause it because I'm gonna listen to it later. No, I got you. But if you fucking later. unpaused it and they said welcome back to the podcast, that's <laughs> <sound> weird. <laughs> you just stop listening. You, you should just <laughs> say like, these are our voices again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're going to continue to talk now. Which we are. We are going to continue to talk. Um, to, but before we talk what about... our break music? Is that bad that I don't know what our break music is? Dude, it's is? bad. There's a lot of things about... Well, I'm not going to listen to a fucking podcast that I'm on. I, I swear, to, if I, I miss a show, I would listen... You listen to our podcast? Occasionally, yeah. That doesn't make... I could just listen to another podcast. I like I'm on li- this one. I like to listen to shows where we talk about a game that I get really excited about because then I like... But I can't play it, and I'm like at work or something. So I'll listen to it again, and I'll can I'll maintain that enthusiasm. Dude, what throughout the, the fuck? Day. Just you're li- li- but li- it's <laughs> weird for you because you're literally just listening to conversations you've had. You could just <laughs> listen to another podcast who goes in depth on that game you're excited about. I'm supporting. Four pla- I'm supporting four player. <laughs> no, da- downloading it and listening to it are different. No, things. you're just using up our fucking bandwidth. You're costing <laughs> us. That's supporting shit. No, like I used to like when actors would come out and be like, "No, I haven't seen my films." They used to be like, "What assholes!" But then I'm like, "No, those what? guys." It makes sense, kind no, of. No, no, no. Those guys are assholes. Well, it depends because on the they're person. not the only ones like, in that fucking movie. No, yeah. it's it's a fucking v- edited visual. Th- Thing, no, you know? no, I, I realize, but I understand where they're coming from in a sense that it's like, dude, I spent so much time on that, I'm kind of done with it. What? Yeah. yeah, but what does the fucking director think or the editor think? You know, it's like we made this fucking. I'm just thing. trying to make a comparison. To the fact that sometimes I'm. It like, was a bad comparison. We've already talked about this for two. Bottom line, long. Hugh Jackman's a fucking asshole. Hey, well, no I one ever Hugh said Jackman. he wasn't. No, I don't know. What's wrong with you? Is Hugh Jackman an asshole? No, apparently he's actually really nice. Yeah, Good. I wasn't. Really nice. Wait a minute, did you see those? Wolverine but he never movies? watches his Wolverine. <laughs> he never watches those Wolverine. Movies. It's because he doesn't want to cry. Me neither. I, no, not except because you've seen them all. Wait a minute. Does Final Fantasy XII have the same cities as Tactics? Or is I don't it just so. the same world? I think it's just the same world. Same world That's and the weird. same. You'll notice the same world and the same like terminology and the same uh, uh, races. You know, oh. we ran out of time. So Bunny I ears. To... Like Chocobos? No, no, no. Chocobos are there. No. It's different. We ran out of time, so I didn't talk about it. But Vagrant Story yeah. is also set in Ivalis. Now, that is pre-fucking bunny rabbits and lizard people and shit. Like, that is the same Ivalis as proper Final Fantasy Tactics. You have long fingernails, Brad. Like, your nail bed. Like, it goes... Hey, far back on your hey, finger. Hey, I yeah. haven't even like. I, I there was a few things I wanted to plug before we jump into talking about our discussion. Now what they like, say with people with long fingernails. Now I feel like oh my mine's God. short. I hate stumpy. every oh, that, oh. single one of you. <laughs> Why do I have such six short foot fingernail then? Hey, yours are short and Brad's are long. Oh, maybe mine are just wait. wait, wait hey, Brad. Hey, hey, hey. No, we're talking about <laughs> sh- fucking games. All right, before we do that, I just want to say, real quick, that anyone watching us live. Tomorrow night, that's Wednesday night, January 29th, is our is going to be our community, or sorry, subscriber game night as we do every month. We'll be playing games chosen by subscribers that were chosen last month during subscriber game night, as well as picking five new subscribers for the coming month, as well as a new subscriber of the month. Um, so join us for the festivities. We'll be having fun tomorrow night. We'll also set aside some time. I think our plan right now is to set aside some time um, to talk to the community, kind of continue our discussion that we were having with y'all last week during our community roundtable. Because that turned out really well. We, we we had a lot of fun. and It was re- really productive talking to you guys and hearing what you guys had to say. And like I said last time, we want to continue doing that. So tomorrow night seems like the most logical time to continue that as far as the logistics of setting that up. So we'll find some time to do that tomorrow. Um, also, well, actually, I'll save that for community segment. So right now, we're going to talk about... Um, a game that was an, that was announced a while back. It was actually announced or unveiled for the first time on the cover of Game Informer, as many games these days are. But um, 
from this from monolith studios which is the, the creative minds behind uh no one lives forever fear condemned um uh gotham, gotham city imposters you know really great studio and they also did the lord of the rings lord of the rings war in the north no wait wait no that was that was project snowblind yeah. war in the yeah. north no, wait, project, project snowblind something else what am i thinking of <laughs> snowblind snowblind yeah, just snowblind just snowblind that's confusing as shit <laughs> project snowblind's a game <laughs> yes that's what i just realized no they did the lord of the rings moba game moba game mm. okay the Defenders of Middle Earth? Yeah, yeah, I forgot the, that was a thing. Guardians of Middle Earth. Guardians, of, yes. Yeah. Guardians um, of Gahoo. They also did The Matrix Online. Oh, really? <laughs> wow. Did they really do that? Did anybody play that? <laughs> <laughs> I remember being really excited before that game came out. AVP 2? Hey, I haven't even got it right. The overlay has already gone on, and I haven't even said the name of the game we're talking about now. We're going to talk about... Uh -oh. <laughs> we're going to talk about Middle Earth... Shadows of Mordor. Hey. Sorry, I was about to say Lord of the Rings. I was like, that's not right. So obviously, this is the game. It's a it's a Lord of the Rings game, obviously, but you know, it doesn't follow the storyline set by you know the movies and the books. It's Correct. kind of its own original thing. You play as a, as a guy. Named, I wouldn't call it original. Well, whatever. <laughs> you know, it's an it's an original story set within that universe, mm -hmm. right? Unless maybe it's not. I could be speaking no, in my ass yeah. on that part. It seems to be. Yeah, it's new um, to you. But it had its it had its kind of gameplay debut. Um, this week, mm -hmm. uh, which we featured, I, I wrote about it on the site. Brad featured it during trailer talk, so he's kind of said some words about it. But we haven't had a chance to kind of have a, have our discussions of it. So I think, I think Chris Davis is going to play some footage of the gameplay now. Well, I think you could. Just yes, he said talk. yes. Um, so I, I kind of want. So, what do y'all think? This game is supposed to be open world. Mm -hmm. The comparisons, like like the early descriptions of the game and the article, the, the original article where they kind of announced it, made me think something akin to like Dragon Age of the Witcher, where it's very open RPG. And that's what I thought too, mm -hmm. which is which is strange considering kind of the first thing at the gate they're choosing to show us is their um, makes it look more like Assassin's Creed, I guess. <laughs> which is funny because this is yeah. I didn't want to have this conversation, which we maybe we can save later in the discussion, but. It didn't necessarily scream Assassin's Creed to me at first, but the similar similarities are definitely there. So I'm fine with, just, I want to say, I'm fine with it being Assassin's Creed-y mm -hmm. if they also have those Dragon Age elements, if they have, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If it's just, you know, in this open world where you do all this stuff, moving around like Assassin's Creed, I'm fine with that. Yeah, I, I mean, don't I think I, this is going to be think, like an I, RPG like you think. I think No, I, I, I think uh, they made it sound a lot more like... They it. probably did. Look, okay, so in the video right now, he's, sta he's standing well, that's, that's on ropes. That's delayed, bro. Oh. Yeah, don't pay attention to that. Okay. I mean, we can talk about it, but... Okay, well... But no, so, so yes, Ropes. it is very, and like you said in Trailer Talk, it's very Assassin's Creed. His movements, the way he vaults over things, the way he climbs things, the way he traverses the world, the they're objectives. all very extremely Assassin's Creed-y. Um, that's not I necessarily think, bad. I think it's actually a byproduct of them choosing to use this first video to kind of um, show off their AI system, or their, um, nem the what they're calling the Nemesis system, system mm -hmm. which is, which theory... Well, let's, we should wait before we talk about that, because I think that's the one thing that, like, kind of stands out in what we saw. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It, it is, I mean, it's definitely the highlight. I, I can see why they're choosing to show it off. I mean... Which, we'll get, we'll go into detail about that in a second, I suppose, but, like, I feel like that's kind of the reason why the demonstration came off very, um, third-person action-oriented, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. because it's showing off like how the narrative plays along. But that's what I'm saying. Like I don't think like I'm hoping that this third person action is just a subset of what you do in the game. There there you know Dragon Dragon Age as you go around doing things and once you go there to do them you get into this third, you know, this third person action adventure kind of type deal while you're there's this overarching maybe story or goal that you have. I feel like the things that are going to make this kind of RPG Esque is gonna are gonna be the things like quests. We don't know anything about the systems. And, first of yeah, all. we don't know the thing is we don't know a whole lot about the systems outside of what they've gone into. Even that entire game for inform articles was focusing very heavily on the Nemesis system. So we don't know how a lot how like from moment to moment. I hate, I hate to break it to you, but like this, but like this is not gonna be an RP. I mean, this is like fucking Assassin's Creed or Batman, which you know what. 
Xbox. It's a stretch, but you could. I mean, those games have RPG elements as well. Yeah, they I mean, they, you know, like, you can, Batman you had those... like upgrades and skill yeah. trees and no, had missions and stuff fine. like that. But I mean, I, I agree with Brad. Like, this isn't gonna like you're not gonna be like looting chests for more gear and getting XP and yeah. leveling up and and having builds and shit like that. The like, thing this is, isn't there, an RPG. The thing I just is, don't there, think are, it's that there are things in the, that they kind of hint at and that are, seem very RPG inspired, like. Like where he he pulls up because one of the abilities he has in the game because you are your character you play as is like a wraith which from Lord of the Rings lore which allows you to um, like touch enemies and take control of their minds and send them on missions like so this part right here that they're showing which may not be in the video but whatever yeah. um, you can kind of see the the enemy's relationship to other enemies throughout the world and like it gives you like percentages of success so if you want to send your enemy this enemy on like a mission to assassinate someone it gives you a percentage chance of their success so it seems very numbers driven in a lot of ways i would also point out that that whole like the way that they show that system like with the tree of like this one henchman being under these enemies and it's basically like a web of people that you're trying to get to one guy at the top of yeah it's really cool. very reminiscent ideologically of, assassin's of creed. the original like no the, first and second assassin's creed that's yeah. the vibe where you were yeah. where you were like fighting your way through people to get information on the next guy to get to go to go against that guy to basically fighting your way up this ladder to the top guy but this know? game feels very assassin's creed one. Oh yeah but the thing was i mean i i liked a lot of the things assassin's creed one did it was a very clunky game and it had its problems but i still like a lot of the the you know this Mm -hmm. stuff that was in the game I mean, it had a lot of really cool ideas this is this is the where like where so i don't want to get into assassin's creed but there are certain things about that series that don't feel that great mm -hmm. you know like the combat it seems kind of mushy yeah and, yeah it's not it didn't, and, you it's know, not very good you you're, you don't i don't feel like i have like ultimate control over my character he sometimes feel, seems like he has a mind of his own you know what i mean mm -hmm. running up walls i don't want him to you know it like the thing is, I feel like Ubisoft just sort of kept adding and ne never really never re refined yeah, exactly. as much as they really should have. Mm -hmm. Monolith, you know, those are core problems with Assassin's Creed. This game doesn't have those because right. this, it's not building on Assassin's Creed. It's it's building something new from the ground up, and it could resemble a lot like Assassin's well, Creed, but it, it doesn't have to play like that. It doesn't have to feel like that. And Monolith, those are really good like designers. Like think about their games you know so that, like, that's like what i'm Fear saying and, and condemned those are games that feel really good i i feel like the systems in this game will be better than they were in assassin's creed i mean if you think of the progression of assassin's creed the series in the first game you could at any point whip out your sword and hit somebody with it and of course yeah. it would be it would be whoa if you kill too many people it would take you out yeah but in four you can't even, you can't even pull out your sword unless there's an enemy standing in front Which of is, you yeah that's one of those things that really frustrates me. About I guess I guess that never bought, that, that never got to me very much because Everything I never feels felt just I never too felt the desire actual. to pull my sword. Well, that's that the thing. Scenario. It's just one of those things that doesn't bother you until you're just until you want to mess around and you try to do it and you can't. That's the thing. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm probably, but I played the game for sixty plus hours no, and never once just wanted, because. But that's yeah, not. The but point. that's not like it, I get it, what you're saying. It's the idea of like, it's the idea of the system. The system isn't consistent enough to support anything that you'd want to do. Yeah. That's that's the lack. Like that that is the that is the the deficit there. I'm currently writing something about Heretic 2. It, it it's cool because in those old games you just had, you know, mechanics. Mm -hmm. Like you you could just do these things, and, the, and 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 the only thing that was keeping you from doing them is you know maybe you run into a wall, mm -hmm. and that wall was, you know, it, it's you ha like like the game it just is constructed around the fact that you have this set of mechanics you know I, I assassin's creed is like the opposite of that you know everything is contextual you know what i mean mm -hmm. like like you can really only climb where they would let you climb you know climbing isn't some isn't something you can physically do it's just something you do when you from, get from to the design, climbable surface you know what i mean from a design standpoint everything in assassin's creed is about your character's relationship to that object. Yes. Right. Yes. Everything. It's everything. Everything's in the environment. It's not that your character can actually really do anything. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it's hard to explain. It's not even that relevant. But I'm saying because Monolith is creating something from the ground up, like they can kind of, you know, even though they're making something that looks a lot like Assassin's Creed, they can, they can really kind of, you know, remove those things that made Assassin's Creed, you know. The frustrating thing that it was for some people, you know. So before we get, because we're gonna talk about the Nemesis system here in a second, because that's kind of the, like we all said, that's kind of the, 
the big, big focus. Dip, the big focus here um, is one thing I want to know about this game because right now this game, if it is what I'm what I'm hoping it is, it has the potential to be like right up there for me with The Witcher Three in terms of excitement. But I want to see because they're they're touting this game as like huge open world, yeah, fully explorable, a la Witcher Three, a la Dragon Age Three, kind of what we were expecting from, from other big, you know, AAA RPGs, quote unquote, in this in this coming up this year. I want to see how this world interconnects because I feel like if, if we're going to draw a comparison to Assassin's Creed 1, that that world was open, but it wasn't like, and it didn't feel like an open world in the sense that I want from a game like this. I want like... I think this is going to feel like Assassin's Creed 3 open. See, that's kind of what I'm... I don't know how I feel about that. Oh, I don't Creed. think Assassin's Creed 3 was that open. Though. I know. It's, I don't think this is... They're saying it's an open world like fucking Tomb Raider but then again, 2013's an open world. But then again, yeah. I mean, I this think ain't gonna be the fucking grand the theft auto mortar. The tomb, the tomb, the, la, 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 la. the term open world gets thrown around a lot these days, pretty loosely, yeah. unfortunately. A lot of terms get thrown around. Really but the thing loosely. is, I'm thinking back to like even The Witcher 2, which was not very open, but like that didn't stop me at all from enjoying that world and that. It's it's about the level of detail and like the the attention to detail, which Monolith is really good at. So maybe even if it's not quite as open as, as some of those other games, it has the potential to be really awesome. I just want to see, because obviously this whole gameplay demonstration they showed was kind of like a, you know... It was a single area. It was like a single area, and you didn't really get to see its relationship to other parts of the world, um, which I'm really curious about that. But The combat looks really good. It does Com look solid. The combat looks like, It looks fantastic. fast and responsive, and I like the ability to kind of throw guys in the direction you want. Again, you know, it doesn't seem that contextual. It just seems like... A thing that your character can do at any time. It looks like it you know? could be very like like Batman Arkham City esque. Yeah. Like, yeah. Which was which more is Batman, Batman than which is like yeah. the comparison that I Dude, drew when into I... the fire, and then he did like a, like a fucking force push, yeah. force push whatever. What is like, like Wraith powers? Or whatever, wraith force yeah. push. Wraith push. Um, yeah. And then the, the Wraith powers just... also seem to open up. Um, some new, very free form. Some very like free form traversal, kind of like uh, even like Dishonor. Like that was very Blink esque. Well, mm. that was, I wouldn't call that, that free form. That did look free form. That looked like, like. Did you watch trailer talk? Yeah, I, but, I, like, I watched the whole video. There was a a prompt. Yeah, there's a prompt over the to do that warp that just said X. You know that what was. Are you talking, what, what, what are we talking about? I'm I mean, you're doing his, his the blink, chase. his warp the when he was like oh. warping between. He wasn't warping up there because he wanted to. He was warping up there because there was a guy that had an X over his head that let you warp to that guy and kill him. He hit X and he dashed up there. Oh, okay, I didn't yeah, see it's that. It's so, not open. So one of the things hmm. I mentioned trailer talk is like I'm wondering if if those chases are going to be almost seem kind of scripted because of the enemy placement. But like I'm saying, I'm thinking that guy is always going to be there. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? No, no, he and you're always going to be able to kind of dash up there, and then and then in other chases there might be another dude down there and dash towards him. You know, it it, it seemed very almost scripted. I'm glad that he actually pulled out this, you know, this, his bow and arrow and shot this like binding arrow mm -hmm. that binded the dude because that seemed I don't think kind he of binded him. I thought he just shot him in the leg. No, he no, binded it. It looked like it he, seemed like because he he, he, he just kind of stood there. And yeah, he didn't, it looked like, like he was trying to leave. He was limping away. Well, whatever. I'm saying away. that's a good mm -hmm. sign. Yeah. The past you know, tense of bind is bound. Like I was getting, like, like, like when he was Not chasing binding. that dude, I was, <laughs> I, I was actually really nervous. But then when he shot that arrow, I was like, and, 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 so and, and he shot that, and he shot that. Yeah, I was like, maybe this is actually a little bit more like prey too. God damn it, gonna die. Don't, you know? don't you fucking <laughs> jinx it, you know? Because. And then tomorrow it's gonna oh. go on hiatus. I don't know how you did see like the way the way it zoomed in on fucking Ratbag oh, yeah, yeah, after he started yeah, yeah. to run. You know, I, I, at first I was like, I don't know, this is just gonna be an Assassin's Creed chase. But see, I think the reason it didn't stick out because though Assassin's Creed to you is typically a game that you have a lot of faults with. None of the things about there's not that many things about Assassin's Creed that necessarily like turn me off the way they turn you off. So sure, for, but... for you it was kind of like a oh god. This is like Assassin's Creed. To me, this was just like, oh, this looks awesome. I don't care I already like you Assassin's love Assassin's Creed. Creed. You don't love chasing dudes, do you? Well, I'll, chase chase sequences can be a lot of fun. How many fucking Assassin's Creeds were there? Why didn't they ever give him like some cool tools that he can use when he was chasing somebody? You have a gun, but you don't have free aim, so you can't really use it to shoot him. Or you know, like, like yeah. 
don't know. No, there, there was a lot of it. I mean, I, I was never a big fan of the chase sequences. Usually, just because they end up being frustrating. I'm not a big fan of chase sequences because the only one I can think of whenever I think about that is end of From Assassin's three. Creed 3. Yeah. See, I remember Woo. doing chases in the first one and them actually being like kind of exciting. Mm-hmm. But as the series went on, it just Well, got it's because the, the series lets you do more. Yeah. And so you could scale. There were more things around to scale. So yeah. half the time when you're chasing somebody, you ended up running up something. Or, you know, there was a lot of, oh, stay within this distance of him. And it was really you easy could, to get too could, far away. Yeah, you didn't have to, like, keep him in your camera the whole time. You could, yeah. like, jump on roofs and, like, cut through an alley or something like yeah. that. Yeah, I mean, that was cooler, but... So let's talk about the Nemesis system. The Nemesis Nemesis system is by far the focus of I'm interested in it. I am very fucking worried. Okay, let's explain it before you start bringing us down with your negativity. I have a very negative opinion so far, but go ahead. Oh, really? I have a very (laughs) positive opinion. Anyways, I mean, very positive if it it pans out the way. It has potential to be amazing. But it's also one of those things that seems very... um, I don't know the word... It's very ambitious oh, as yeah. far as game design goes, and it's it almost seems too good to be true. I'm curious as to how far it's going to go. So the way the way they're touting this nemesis system to nemesis system to work is essentially every enemy in the game, like there's no canned enemy enemy types in the game. Everyone, everything is randomly generated, procedurally generated. procedurally generated, whatever. And that means every character you run into has a name and a personality and a background that's procedurally generated. And if you encounter an enemy, fight them and they survive that encounter they will continue on into the world and you have the you have, have the ability to run back well, you, into them later you and have they the choice will, to let them live yeah so you have the choice to let them live so if you let someone live i'm not sure the thing is i'm not sure what the reasoning you would have to let someone live but say someone survives an encounter with you you will be able to run into them at later points in your own story and in the world and they will remember you and they will adapt and they will kind of have you will kind of have this built narrative based on your encounters with this one enemy mm-hmm. and like that kind of creates like a there's a certain like i don't know i don't want to say randomness but you know there's an adaptability of like the narrative that in that sense because it's going to be a little bit different every time you play well i hope so i don't get say. a dude named so they say like, when i play it's it's <laughs> wait what I said I hope I don't have a problem with his name. Doesn't matter. No, it was a stupid no, no, name. But, but it doesn't matter. What what I'm what I'm thinking. My big misgivings about the system is I, I've been listening to everything that they've been saying. I read the Game Informer article. I was watching that video. The vocabulary that they're using to describe this nemesis system, the way that I'm hearing what they're saying, should mean that this is a very expansive system in which any sort of like kind of quirky or weird little character can just kind of pop out of a pile of numbers and be like this this exclusive this character that's exclusive to your one playthrough of this game and and actually has like a personality of its own that you're never really going to see again if you play multiple playthroughs that's, right that's not true that's kind of how they've been describing that's what they want you to think they, that they, it is. they can well, describe it all they want no, the no. thing is but it's what, it's mm-hmm. But what I'm thinking, okay, so for instance, in in that in that trailer where they they show him, uh, he he does that like mind control thing to rat bag mm-hmm. so that he'll attack his master later in the game, mm-hmm. right? And then he he goes to confront uh, that boss character, or whatever, and rat bags there, and then rat bag turns on him and tries to kill the guy and gets killed or something like that. Mm-hmm. They have all these cutscenes of like rat bag like sneaking up on the guy and like he's 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 all you know his eyes are glowing because he's under mind control and everything. They've got a lot of like focus material on these like on these like not, I don't want to say like plot points, but like on these events that are happening. And what I'm thinking is, does this mean? That every time I play through the game, I can basically replicate that encounter, and the only difference is going to be that that quote unquote rat bag character will just have a different skin and have a different name. Yes, but he's still going to act the same. Thinking, he's yeah. still going to be no. pretty much the same character. No. So, so, so my, my my thought process on it is is it's procedurally generated in the sense that we need a character here. Uh, grab bag here's his race grab bag here's his name grab bag here's a weapon he likes grab bag here okay his personality if that's from what a it is if that's what it is that is that that is that is mostly cosmetic and that's actually complete bullshit because the character if, if if this character always has to be here if if I tell this if I like do my mind control on that character and make him go assassinate this guy or I make him go run off and tell everybody of the horrors that he witnessed at my hands you know or everything like that but those options always lead down the same paths if if there are only a few 
number of branches that these encounters can go down, that completely undercuts the whole idea of these unique emergent moments coming out of the system that they are telling you to expect. You're absolutely right. But we don't know. It's easy we to be don't. skeptical. It right. sounds super ambitious. It sounds like... And I heard somebody else make this comparison. It sounds like Peter Molyneux pitching yes. a system in a fable game. Yes. Where it's like, you're like, you know, this ain't, it's not going to be like this in that game. It's like, they want you it's to believe to that be these like characters that. go home at the end of the day to their wife and kids and like sit down and have their favorite meal. And that the, all this stuff is just, actually like being factored so, in. So, we just so don't like, know. So we just the, don't know. One thing, technology's only come so far. Exactly. Secondly, it's though. marketing. They, 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 it's procedurally generated. It's unique. Which is a word that... It's unique every time, asterisk, yeah. because you're going to have a different person. Maybe his location is within, you know, XYZ area, so it's kind of in a different place every time, but he's always kind of in the same place. I mean, they can, they can only go so far. Okay. If, it was, if, voice if it was truly <laughs> unique and random, okay. every single character could happen to be in one town. I get that. Okay, I so, get that. But like, but but the reason why this is like unsettling is because so far that's all they've really been talking about is this system. Is this the only unique thing that they really have to hang their hat on? Okay. And if so, what does that end here's, up amounting to? Here's a couple things that I think we can't we can't really be quick to judge because no. the, these are the things that it's really going to depend on the complexity of that web, that interconnected web of characters. We don't know how many characters there are, as you can see how many points in which you can interact with that character that will send him on different branching paths and which will lead to other branching paths. Like it could end up being way more complex than we know. Also, I had thought I lost it. Fuck me. It needs to be very system-driven. More state of yeah. decay, less... Oh. Less... Um... Uh, less, you know, what we typically expect from a AAA game. Meaning, that that guy, once I know who the, my target is, I should be able to just go to him... And, and like not have this encounter with Rat Bag. Mm -hmm. I should be able to go I'm confident in my own ability to fight him, fight him and kill him. He should just be in the world I don't think, by like like crackdown style. I don't think they're gonna let you do that. But, but see, that's, that's how what this game needs. I agree. I agree. But the thing is, if they do that, I think the game is gonna be too short. You know. But well, I mean, it, it's, uh, it's, it's up to the player if they want to do that. And I understand what you're saying. But so make him really hard. You know, the more well, systems the they, they can be... do that. But the thing is, from what we saw. Ratbag stabbed him and he lost maybe like a third of his health. Yeah. Well, he, and no, then you killed him like, pretty no, easily. Do you know why? I think, do you know crazy. why I think you can go after him directly without having to involve Ratbag? Because when you when you took over Ratbag's mind, it showed you that web of mm -hmm. his relationship to other characters in that in that city or right or whatever. Right. You could send him to assassinate any one of those characters. You Correct. didn't have to send him after Orthog or whatever his name was. Mm -hmm. You could have just said, hey, go kill this dude over here. It, it was it like you your level or something. Yeah, yeah. It, gave, it gave you percentage chances of killing each individual character on that web. Correct. So if you just said, hey, go kill that dude over there, I'm going to take care of Orthog myself. Well, the other thing I'm really curious also, about, too... I'm sorry. Did you, did you notice that system, though, that where apparently Ratbag had influenced some of his underlings... Yes. ...to also, I guess, fight on your side when you got down into the fray? Correct. Like, if you never had that interaction uh, with Ratbag... And would you, you just fight all ...and you just people? went to that place, would they just all immediately, like, zone in and try to kill you? I would assume so. I would assume well, so. Well, like, if that's true, like, we could be dealing with a much more systems driven game so, than we're expecting like this game needs my, my question to be unscripted that I, to be I, I would like i would like that system i like that system i like that you can you know all of the people rat bag you know that like rat bag will follow him and stuff like that and so my question was is can i do some sort of path and where i go and i find rat bag and i i get him on my side and then i go find this guy and I get him on my side and i almost like turn everybody against him and then i go to this meeting where they're all together and i just say go and they all just fucking just kill him like, can I, like, take over everybody, or is there a limit that to that? That sounds awesome. Also, it's probably too related to know how Also, if a lot if a lot of these are just, like, based on percentages, like, you do these things, and it might increase the percentage of rat bag killing, yeah, actually killing rate, this dude, yeah. is there going to be certain people playing the game where it's like, there's only a 2% chance that, you know, one of this orc dudes, you know, are going to kill him, but, you know, roll the dice, he and actually, XCOM yeah. style actually gets it, and like, oh, shit. The game was just way easier for him, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, that would be cool. Um, sort of. I mean, it's it, weird. I, I feel like I feel like I I'm having a lot of in my mind. I'm making a lot of comparisons to the promise of the original Borderlands. Yeah. To like procedurally generate like over a million guns, and while there were like a shit ton of guns in that game, right. 
there were certain like it wasn't quite as it, deep or as fleshed out, but it was still being, cool. It ended. Up, it was cool. It ended up not being necessarily exactly what they promised. It, it ended up being glorified palette swaps. Yeah, which, sure. Which nobody gives a shit about. Uh, I mean, I mean, visually, the, yeah. the point is, there were there was so they they got they got to this point where there were so many different quote unquote variations that they were all kind of muddled together and you couldn't really tell one from the other anyway. So does it even matter? Well, that's what I was saying. Like, to me, it, it was actually more frustrating variety. because there were so I, many things. I didn't want to necessarily spark a conversation about Borderlands. I'm just okay, saying. no, no. But 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 this is but this is what I'm Get saying. Like these bag. orcs, like is are you going to even notice if Ratbag is like fucking you know meat curtains in the next game or something? Like is is he going to be completely different or is he just going to be like the same guy but have blue skin instead I don't of know. green skin? Only it, time will we, tell. I'll tell you this much: they're only going to do so much voice acting, recording. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Like, and like, well, like you were saying before too. Like, a pitch. lot of this is also informed by like initial encounters with the player, right? So if if you're fighting somebody and that enemy survives the encounter they end up becoming like more of a boss character like how many situations are there going to be in which you're not killing your enemies I think you're is it only going to be like way too much into this no no <sighs> well it's stuff that it's hard to know that's what i'm saying you don't you don't know like there's they until they say or don't say we're not gonna know i mean i i think you're you're making the game a little more ambitious than it actually is no, but that's that's. Oh, I'm not are. saying that it's going to be like this. I'm saying that this what they are promising is too ambitious for them to deliver on. Think of how big the promises were for Duke Nukem Forever. Oh well, that's not even. No, I'm, that's what I'm saying. It's all marketing. They they their game is the best game in the world, and no game is better than their game. I know. And that's all they're they're gonna say. Our game is procedurally generated. Well, that's, our, let's not go down but that's that what road. I'm saying. I know. They're I gonna use saying. all the big words they can to make their. And you know what? They're, they're not gonna lie. There's some kernel of truth to what they're saying. Just because the fucking kernel they're talking about is a massive one doesn't mean that's the tr that happens to be the case. But they're gonna say whatever they can to sell this game. Of course, I mean, that should be expected. I'm honestly, I like my scope of the like what I thought this game was going to be shrunk a lot when i actually saw the game me play. too i i gotta be honest i was hoping for something a little bit more like skyrim yeah see the thing is i, I feel like they've expecting... only they've only shown you such a narrow slice of the of what of, 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 of the game but, oh, i feel like it's impossible to make that maybe that i'm a little yet. cynical and maybe i'm you know a bit maybe of a realist. A little cynical i never whatever. maybe i'm a bit of a realist and maybe i've you know been following games for a long fucking time but when i saw what i saw i don't think this is going to be skyrim with batman combat this is i have a a better idea of what this thing's actually going to be and I don't, i'm not saying that's a bad thing at all i mean batman's great no. what the good ones are but but yeah. i'm definitely not putting this on the same tier as dragon age and witcher i don't know i don't yeah. think it's I, gonna be that yeah I don't, I don't you're not gonna it's... be getting into conversations like that you're gonna be stabbing yeah, dudes in the not. head yeah mm -hmm. I don't know. I think it's too. I think it's it's a little early to be making that call. All I'm saying yeah. is I'm very optimistic about it. I think it looks fantastic. Norm, norm, but... Normally, I I, I'll, I would go into Brad's boat and be, but I, I think in this case, I really agree with Nick that you can't tell. I mean that 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 could be a town that he walked up to. I'm I'm not saying it is. I'm saying it could be. Who's well, publishing this game? WB. Yeah. It's being developed by Monolith. Monolith. So. I have a lot it, of faith. If, in if I have any like hope, it is behind. It is because monolith um is a really at least it used to be a really great developer maybe who knows who's still at that studio i know there's definitely some but then you know left it, it could also be like dragon age one where there's just a bunch of blips on the map and you go to a blip and that's when you're in the town yeah so we don't know that's what i'm saying I'm like just, i'm not gonna I, pass a judgment until i you I know see. what i'm thinking of i know a lot of y'all didn't play it but that game viking oh god why would you do this no, have you have you all played the game Viking? Nope. No, I've heard no. it's all right. Yeah, it, by uh, by the guys making the new Alien game. Um, but that was uh, a Creative Assembly game. Yeah, I had no idea. Yeah, Creative Assembly. Well, like like so that's kind of that's an open world, the scope of it, but the fact that it's very much not like an RPG, like like a Skyrim kind of thing. Like people out there who who have listening to me who've played Viking. I seriously think that's going to be kind of like the size and scope of this game. But Viking was cool. It did a lot of really cool things. And and it would fit that Viking formula. From maybe based I'll, on what maybe we I saw. will try Viking then. Now well, that I'm, you sure. have my attention. I mean, why the hell not? 
Anyways, we'll, 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 we will, I can't speak tonight. We will revisit this as we know more. I mean, I'm sure they'll be trickling stuff out. It's probably not, we're probably not going to see this at PAX East, but maybe it'll be around in time for PAX Prime to maybe get a, a good look, a better look at it. Maybe even get our hands on it. Who fucking knows? Um, but let's move on. Next, I wanted to talk about Thief, which is, it's, are we considering this a reboot or this, a remake? Or, it doesn't a, fucking matter. It's been so goddamn long, even if it was a sequel. When did the last Thief game come out? 2003? What? Was it, was it three? It's it was been over a decade Xbox. since the last Thief game? Three or four. Yeah. Three or four. 2003 or 2004. Well, damn. That was... So, the new Thief reboot or sequel, whatever the hell you want to call it, is being developed by uh, I'm sorry, Ubisoft. Um, Idos Montreal, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess it, it had made some appearances in like trade shows and at press events and whatnot for the past couple of months. And a few months ago, the consensus kind of coming out of it was that it was not the most positive predominantly because, and even when we saw it at E3, I don't think we were super positive. I wasn't super positive on an E3. It looked pretty, a lot of the problems stem from in a, in a, in, a, in an industry right now where there's so many games you can play that have kind of. They give you a lot more freedom to move about and give you all these kind of like superhuman abilities like Dishonored, make traversal like super addicting and fun. And even Assassin's Creed to a, to a, to a point where, you, you know, you can scale everything. Then you have games like Thief where you're kind of, it's more grounded. You're not superhuman. You're not climbing up walls and yeah, all yeah. I mean, you're doing some of that, but like, I guess... But, I mean, what does that mean? A, a lot of people did, came out of the... like Tenchu back in the day. That yeah, wasn't superhuman. I know, but, but then again... Back in the day, we didn't have games like Dishonored, where it, the traversal was so ridiculously... Well, we had like, Thief. I, Thief, Thief, Thief 2 had rope arrows the, the tra- that you could shoot anywhere there was wood. The traversal, this one, you could only shoot them on rope arrows. The traversal points. in Thief was was less fantastical, but still there. You could still traverse areas in different yeah. Yeah, ways. Uh, 3 had wall climbing. I'm just, I'm just saying, like, the... the Consensus kind of coming out of press events recently was not the greatest, and a lot of that stemmed from the fact that people just felt like you were not, you didn't have, you didn't have a huge swath of like move sets or abilities that kind of gives games like Assassin's Creed and and Batman and all those other things like its charm. I guess I don't know. So maybe it came across as too easy. Shut the fuck up. What? What? <laughs> Zlatko, who's a big Thief fan, I know that. Uh, he says you can't even jump in Thief 4? Shut the fuck up. That is not true. Has anybody, can anybody well, else confirm that? I went to the, I went no to the demonstration at E3, and I'll be honest, I can't remember a I secret. I hate shit like that. Just let me, give me mechanics. Design your level around my mechanics. Don't just not let me fucking jump. Jesus Christ. What kind of Thief can't jump? You press A near a ledge to jump. Oh, I hate that shit. I fucking hate it so now, much. Here's my question though, because there were things, Tomb Raider. There were things in in that they that were present in the the demonstrations before, where they were getting all that negative press that they have since addressed and like made changes to. I think they removed all the quick time events and whatnot. Is that what I remember? They removed something that was pretty prominent. They removed, in the demo- there, was a, there was an experience slash leveling system that they removed because original D fans bitch, and I don't know if that was necessary. Like, that was, that's a sign of weakness to remove something that's very core yeah. like that just because some old school D fans bitched about it. Like, that seems weak. I mean, that, for all we know, that could have really added to the experience in a way that, you yeah, know, like- it could have balanced out the fact, you know, you give and take a little, you know, maybe it's not going to be like Thief in this way, but maybe this system really could have could have made it, you know, fun or addictive in like some other kind of way that you couldn't have predicted. But they just, you know, like I said, that's a sign of like a, a lack of confidence. Yeah. And that that is not a good thing. So I guess what <laughs> I haven't even gotten to that kind of like, sorry, go ahead the main part of the story i mean that's that's pretty alarming i want i'm wondering if those things are things that, that have been addressed since, because the more recent previews of you know press have been playing it and talking about it the most recent previews have actually been a lot more positive so i'd be curious to find out what exactly was changed aside from the, what we're about to talk about which is the customizable difficulty because a lot of people were talking about in the early press events that it came across as a little too easy maybe a little too handholdy and it didn't feel like a genuine or a core thief experience because maybe brad can shine some light on this but i because i never played the original thieves those were a lot more 
I was playing Thief Two the other day. A lot, maybe a lot more hardcore in terms of the way it approaches difficulty. So what? What was? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. So 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 these difficulty options seem you know it's cool that they're there, right? Yeah. You could tick them on and off, right? Like, but the, but the way the original Thief games did difficulty wasn't it was just steal more shit. <laughs> essentially you know once you got up to higher difficulties it was okay well also don't kill anyone or, or whatever you know you still had your core objective but you still wanted to you know stealing shit basically meant you had to like explore more yeah. you had to sneak into areas that were probably harder to get to bigger risks you know because stuff, yeah. because you had to find shit to steal so the the harder difficulty was a more organic thing it was like be a better be better at sneaking around and exploring and finding out how to how to get to places you know that was a it was a really smart way to you know, do difficulty. It it it, 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 and it didn't make, you know, it didn't make, you know, shit harder in, in, in like in the stupid ways that you see other games, you know, yeah. make it harder. It was just, you know, it was literally be a, be, you know, you have to be a better thief, but, but these options, like, again, turning some of these things off just might not necessarily fit in modern game design. Like they had some of these options in Deus Ex Human Revolution because again, same studio or same developer, um, but it, it had this history of like this beloved old school PC game that people didn't want them to fuck up a sequel to. So so they put in some of these options and one of them was that you can turn off the glow you know, mm. around the items that you can interact with, yeah. right? And you and you know, you think, well, the old games didn't have the glow, so or you know, didn't have highlights on the stuff you can interact with. So, you know, it's more old school when you do it that way. But in reality, it just made it more frustrating because, you know, modern graphics are so much more detailed, you know, it's a lot harder to tell with what you can interact with and what you can't. It it just became a, a you know, it it, it seemed like it was there to appease the old school fans, but I think even old school fans weren't really using that because that's not realistic in, on this in this more modern game. While back in like an old school Thief game, like the graphics were much more rudimentary and and you know they that like you know you, there were only so many objects in a fucking room in the first place. Yeah. So it it didn't matter that you know you know there wasn't a big fucking highlight on the shit you could interact with. I mean, it, it just it doesn't seem. It it it. It seems this weird. stuff frustrates me. It it seems weird. I mean, I I want to be I want to be optimistic about this game because I think they did a fantastic job of delivering on the promise of Deus Ex: Human Revolution. Yes, and which is the which was the main reason I was optimistic at E three. But did you watch? Did, did you go to the demonstration with me at E three? Yes. Okay. I wasn't very optimistic coming off of that because I. Th it looked a lot more linear than I was expecting. Well, it to. they they had that part at the end of that first level or whatever that they showed, where it was like an escape sequence, like an escape QT and, sequence, and, right? And, and yeah, and this was after we had played fucking Absolution and it scared us. Yeah, know? and this is this is kind of what I'm. I have a feeling is the stuff they removed as a response to fan reaction, as well. I could be wrong, but. I don't know. I I think I think a I don't lot. I think they remove that stuff. I just think you know they're like hey, with it, man. They're not focusing it on this much because it scared people off. Yeah. I, I but I think the the success or failure of this customizable difficulty is gonna rely is gonna be directly correlated to how linear these levels really are. Because I don't mean, know. I don't think the levels are gonna be linear. In fact, they even talked about there's there's a hub um, there's a hub city. Mm -hmm. like a hub world like a hub area yeah. that you can sneak around in like steal stuff in even do side quests in hmm. like, like that you go like back little, to like after... dishonored a little bit yeah but imagine dishonored but with actual shit going on and much something going on in like, the hub hmm. world yeah stuff going on not just you know like it sounds really cool it sounds kind of like um remember wolfenstein the the one that came out several oh, yeah. years ago where you had a kind of a hub world between the main levels, but you're actually, actually going to be able to, you know, explore, still shit, do side quests in. That sounds really exciting. Uh -huh. you know, I wish it was all seamless, but I don't think it is. Um, did they talk yeah. about that? No. I mean, not recently. But I, I'll be interested to see. Because I, I I'll, I'll be honest, I haven't read a lot of the more recent preview stuff for it. I just remember walking out of the demonstration E3 being pretty underwhelmed. Um, but I think it was that, that doesn't necessarily mean anything because... Also we the, all know it's not the first time developers have chosen really awkward or, this, or you know, bad things to demo from their games. This yeah. swoop mechanic seems very confusing to me. Did you say swoop? 
Yeah, what swoop mechanic? It's like their blink knockoff. Well, uh, it's the one where you can kind of like dash in and out of shadows. But it's oh, it, they did they showed that the E three demonstration, yeah. didn't they? Okay, I but it, that. It, it, again, you know, they've been showing more footage, and I've been watching that. Um, it just seems it doesn't seem super defined, you know, like a lot large portion of the game is just fucking at night, right? So it's hard to tell. What is a shadow I can like dash in and out of? I feel like they kind of had a mechanic of this. Remember Tenchu on the Wii? No, I like stopped. Tenchu, Tenchu Four. <laughs> I stopped playing after Tenchu Wrath of Heaven. Didn't they call PS2. it Tenchu Four on the Wii? Yeah. Like I, think I feel so. like it kind of had a mechanic like this where you can kind of dash in and out of shadows, but shadows were a little more defined in this game. I'm I'm watching footage of this game and I'm like, where is he? I don't. I can't even understand. I don't even understand what he's dashing in and out of. Wait, wait. I mean, is he supposed to just be running from one shadow to another, or is he like he can dash in and out into the shadow, shadow and coming out of another one? <laughs> no, I, I think it's just yeah. like him dashing. No, no, no. Shadows. It's just like swooping from like shadow to shadow. Swoop, Swoop me! me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Crispy knows what's going on. Anyways, to just kind of sum up the uh, for fan like for core fans of the people who are going to spend a lot of time diving into this game and, and getting really good at it, they seem pretty confident about their their level design, which I think is promising, but they're giving you the ability to turn off or turn on every single thing that would pretty much affect the difficulty, difficulty level of the game. Yeah. So you can mm-hmm. you can make it so that any you know any killing anybody or knocking anybody out fails the mission, or if you die, you have to restart the entire game, or if you get alerted, if you alert a guard at any any moment of the game, you fail the entire game. You can go, you can down to the wire. You can kind of adjust every little thing, and, and for each thing, I guess. I may not understand this correctly, but for each thing that you turn off or on that adjusts the difficulty, making it harder, it adjusts like your multiplier for like points, points, points that you earn yeah. for like doing things throughout the world. Hmm. So the more things you add, the well, higher... see, like it didn't seem when I was watching the video, it didn't seem like it was adjusting the multiplier. The multiplier always stayed at one. It was like one times, and it just added up a number of points you got. Yeah, I don't so know I'm, what not, the actual I'm not exactly sure how it just adjusted the base number. Yeah, of like the base number of extra there. points you get, or something but essentially like that. it's going to play into leaderboards and. Isn't so like... there? There's also an option where if you lose or fail a mission, it just like deletes yep, your it. save file, yeah. bumps you out to the menu, and deletes Which is the file. Weird, because old thief games, you just fuck. Fucking... They had quick saves. I mean, yeah. that's <laughs> well, like this, the opposite this, of this like has, delete This has save. quick saves, but you can actually deactivate quick saves. Yeah, that's okay. another thing. Like, there's just like, to make it more like the original. Which I'll say, uh, <laughs> most people are not gonna turn these things on. It's kind of nice. I mean, I'm not gonna knock them for putting it in. There. No, yeah. Um, it, it, and, it would and be it, better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Yeah. All, all I'm gonna say, like, I'm, I'll say this: it's a lot easier to put in these check boxes than to make sure the game is balanced around it. Mm. Zlatko yeah, says, true. he says, if the difficulty is based entirely on these customizable options, that's a bad sign for the world design. But I feel like, I, I'm getting yeah. kind of the sense that these, these, the ability to add these customization options in were maybe added later in the game. Which is a bad sign. Which also could be a bad sign, but for a different reason. Because it's, it's showing weakness again. But he's worried about the world being designed around those options. Those options. Mm-hmm. Which may not be the case, which, but it might be that if you play the game with the options on the game wasn't necessarily it could go either way no we guys. have the perfect example because like... didn't hitman have some of the same things remember hitman absolution had a hardcore mode Dude. where you could turn mm. off like the ability to like disguise yourself in the costumes or whatever like oh yeah remember you didn't that? have you didn't have that instinct yeah, gauge or whatever it was gauge. But they just took that out. Remember that? You, remember? Could, you couldn't. You couldn't like use it to like hide from the yeah, cops. Yeah, but when but, you're walking but the down. levels are balanced around that. They're designed around that to the point where it's like, how do you even play this game? Yeah, by hardcore, in any sort mean, of entertaining way. By hardcore, we mean we take oh. out your systems and leave you with the only option is to shoot dudes in the face. <laughs> kind of. I mean, I mean, I don't know. The the truth is, you know, you need to commit to it. If, yeah. if you're gonna try to make a hardcore game, you need to design your game as a fucking hardcore game. You know, from the ground up, like a Dark Souls or whatever. You yeah. need. That's why I was talking about old school thief difficulty options. I'm yeah. just steal more shit. Because naturally, what comes out of that is, you know, being a better thief, exploring more. You know that that's the smart way to do it. This could, like, this stuff could break the game. And sure, maybe it's beatable, but. That doesn't mean it's fun. That just means you have to re- maybe rely on bullshit tactics and just, yeah, you know, wait for dudes to pass. I'll be honest. 
I'm excited that they added these options, but it could you're go, not going to use it any could of go them. either way. I mean, yeah, I yeah, think yeah, it's I no, know. but I mean, I'm going to go through and change some of them, sure, but not the I mean, stupid ones. No <laughs> focus meter just means you're not going to be able to see shit. I think the changes that I'm going to make to it are the things that are just like HUD, like things that appear on screen. You can change so that certain things fade in and out mm -hmm. when you're not using them, which is nice. Which again, good in theory, but I was doing that in Assassin's Creed, like, oh, I could turn off this and turn off this. And there is an this. idea. And I turn everything off, like, oh, cool. Eh, but, then, but I should probably put yeah. that thing on. Did I, I not, need that. Did I not oh, show you? Oh, and I kind of need that other thing, too. Did I not show you the post? The, I think, I forgot who it was. Someone yeah, at Giant post? Bomb. Oh, yeah. Someone at Giant Bomb way to... came up with the perfect setup of HUD for Assassin's Creed 4, where you turn certain things off and leave certain things on. And I did, the ex I did exactly what he did, and it was perfect. It really was. Like, I never had to adjust the, the HUD ever again, and I... But I always had what I needed, but I was never filled. It was never filled with all that bullshit on screen, which was great. Um, anyways, let's move on from Thief. I'm kind of I'm excited for that game that comes out. It's the kind of the first big like high profile end of next, next gen release. Um, end of next month, yeah. So <laughs> looking forward to that. But uh, let's just talk real briefly about um, Gears of War for a second. I know none of us really play that, but I guess it is kind of big news this week that Microsoft purchased the rights to gears of war which was owned by epic yeah mm -hmm. um so microsoft <laughs> purchased the rights to to gears of war guaranteeing that i guess gears of war is going to remain a microsoft exclusive, exclusive title which we all saw coming i guess but with epic no longer at the helm first of all how do we feel about that well what the fuck is epic doing you know <laughs> they're, they're, are, are they just my answer be... to this is the same as it always has been fortnite. which is they're working on fortnite, <laughs> stop yeah. it, stop all it. the resources going for fortnite. all of it all their but billions fortnite of fucking dollars fortnite is going to be this huge like next like the, the next, next great thing the mind what if killer what yeah. if fortnite is the next coming of jesus like it's no, it's not like that it, that's not it's not even a big so you the said. thing is a lot Tomorrow of the talent Fortnite's and canceled. like Cliffy B left Epic a lot of high profile people left Epic like developers it's hard to imagine a, a, with, like so there's Cliffy, rumors that Epic is just not going to make games anymore they're just going to make engines. Unreal Engine so Cliffy left Epic before they made Judgment didn't he yeah yeah, mm -hmm. that's not a good sign. It was a while ago. Well, they <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Judgment was uh, yeah, people was fly. people can fly, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, you're right. You're right. That was people so Epic fly. already gave up on fucking. Anyways, the second part of the story is that after purchasing Gears of War from Epic, they announced that they're going to be giving Gears of War as a franchise to developer Black Tusk, which who they they used to be known as I forgot what it meant. It's one of the like the generic like Microsoft game studios mm. stuff, whatever, and they worked on a few other things, including a Connect title. Nothing crazy, but they did. Wait, was it Connect Sports Season Two? This <laughs> is important. <laughs> no, but here's what I'm a little concerned about: is I guess I think this was like a year or two ago or something. One of the E3s, they had Black Tusk had said, or my, maybe Microsoft had said, come out and said it that Black Tusk is one of their next big studios, and they're they're currently giving them all the funding and the support they need, and they're letting them work on a brand new IP that is going to be the next Halo. Of... It's Gears of War? Or... No. No, nobody knows at the moment. They can't. They have not confirmed or denied whether or not that new IP they were working on is still in development, which I'm... A new IP from a, a, a studio that, that Microsoft trusts... It's exciting, and if it's going to be the next Halo, of course I want to see what it is. Even if you know, even if we do roll our eyes or not tend to give a shit about Gears of Wars and Halos and Call of Duties, it's still exciting when a new one comes out. That's why I'm excited about Destiny, because that looks like a, I what I'm excited. Regardless of what you think about Bungie, or about Halo, Bungie is a great developer, and I can't wait to see what they do next. So, mm -hmm. of course, I'm excited to see what's going to happen next. Maybe Epic, what's the next big maybe thing? Epic sold. Gears of War, so they can 100% focus their efforts on the new Shadow Complex game. God damn it. Oh, I or, or, the or, yeah, the next, uh, or the next, what's that game called? The chair's on the... only doing I like mobile games now. What's the yeah. iOS game? That... No, Infinity oh, Blade. Infinity the next Blade. Infinity Blade. Yeah. God damn. Anyways, so that's kind of a... Uh, Fucking chair. I don't, know how, I don't know how I feel about it. I, I, I didn't play Judgment, Gears of War... I don't really have any desire to play Judgment at all, so I don't know how I feel. I'll be. Can that series change much, like to the point where it's going to be like super appealing? I feel like that's su that's such a. No. It's so yeah. reliant on its, on its look and its feel that I. It's if, like it's like. Yeah. Can you get excited about another God of War game? Not if they're going to keep doing <laughs> cranking out, you know. Which we talked so much about before after God of War three came out. We talked about. 
they're going to go on, they're going to make an, the next big God of War, and it's going to be, we're hoping it's going to be something completely different, like a completely different mythology. Mythology. New, uh, maybe make it a lady. Maybe yeah. make it open world. Yeah. Metroidvania. And what did we get? We got a prequel to God of War starring the same character that was completely underwhelming. Oh, my God. Remember at E3 when that was unveiled and everyone was like, okay, <laughs> another Kratos game. But then again, maybe that was the wake-up call. Before. Maybe that was the fire under their ass that's going to get them to change it. Because that the game... The fire on their ass is, is if those games sold like shit. I don't think they sold that well. They probably the didn't sell... I doubt they sold as well as their previous entries in the series. Even if they yeah. did sell millions of copies, they probably didn't sell nearly as many. Which, to a co- which to us, may not seem like a big deal. But to a company who's all about the bottom line and making money, selling millions less of what... You know, selling fewer millions of copies is a big deal. So, who knows? Huh. I'm interested to see what happens... I kind of want to know, though, what's going on with that that new IP from Black Tusk, but we'll see. Um, but last, before we move on to community, Brad, um, tell us about Unsung Story. Okay, so Unsung Story is the is the Kickstarter game that I was excited about because Yasumi Matsuno was working on it. Yep. He was creating a new world, the new strategy RPG, like much like Final Fantasy Tactics and Tactics Ogre, and it was it was going to be developed by Playdeck, who who make who make a bunch of mobile games that are successful like Ascension and stuff. But it, and they launched the Kickstarter. Their goal was six hundred thousand, and in the first two days they hit three hundred grand. Yep, like it was going super fast, and to the point where like a lot of people thought they were going to hit their stretch goals and. I was excited. I was like, fuck yes. Fuck yes. Well, it is now, I think, um, they're over halfway through their Kickstarter now. Don't they have just under two weeks or something? Yeah. Now, the thing is, and they even got to 400,000 pretty quick. For the past week, it's it's gone from like 400,000 to like 430,000 in like the past week week so what's slowing it down it ground to a fucking halt and they to the point where they even rearranged all their stretch goals and made them much more achievable and said and even put ps4 on there as like a really early stretch goal so what but what is the what is slowing it down okay so so supposedly a lot of the kickstarter backers were japanese people uh people who are just big yasumi matsuno fans yeah like 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 tactics ogre is incredibly popular, like well respected in Japan, like the original Tactics Ogre, and so was Final Fantasy Tactics. I mean, you know, Matsuno just gets a lot of love over there, but uh, I think there was some misunderstanding as far as Yasumi Matsuno's involvement with yeah. the game, and now he's still creating the world and he's still writing the story for the most part, and he, and he was in in the systems were his design pitch, but he's not director of the game. He's not the director, and he's even been going on on Twitter because people have been asking him, like, "What about this? Or how are you involved in this?" And and someone even straight up a- asked him, like, "Like, like, would you consider this a Matsuno game?" And he said, "No." <laughs> and people Ooh. just stopped throwing money at it. <laughs> and this Kickstarter went. Oh. Now, with the way Kickstarters work, I think it's they, I think they're gonna hit their goal. I think they're going to hit the 600,000 and I think it's going to stop because there's a certain people, there's a certain amount of people out there who want to see this game made. You know, I'm one of them, even though I knew from the beginning, like his involvement, you know, I think the English speakers kind of understood that. Right. But they never have him on video talking about the game. Even, Even the picture of him is just his Twitter avatar, you know, but you know, there's video of, of Sakamoto, you know, the, the composer for all of Matsuno's stuff, like talking about, you know, making the music for the game and stuff. But it, what has me worried is that they're not going to re- meet, meet any of these stretch goals. 600,000 is their goal, right? And their readjusted 750,000 goal is having Alexander O. Smith and and his, his, like, his translating partner, Joseph Reeder, who translated War of the Lions, as like translators for this game. And I don't even think they're going to hit that, <laughs> which is super fucking scary because one of the, I mean, like, like Alexander O. Smith is one of the fucking reasons that like something like Vagrant Story is like s- the, such this like incredibly epic thing, you know, like, like, like he adds a lot of fucking flavor into the translation of these games and kind of makes them like stand out of like, well, this is very different than this fucking Kells game I played. This is like, yeah. 
impressive stuff mm-hmm. you know and i'm just really fucking worried and even though they really lowered like the stretch goals like 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 i think 1.2 million was what was what they like it was coming it would be coming to ps4 you know but it's not gonna hit that it's just not and and so i'm starting to really worry you know i'm worried we could end up in a situation where yeah i think if they don't hit their goal at all this game's still gonna get made but it's only gonna be on phones which that would suck. Which that would suck. I, I think it's going to be made for PC, though, at the very least, is, is, if it is, hits the goal. Is there a stretch goal for hitting, like, 3DS? Yeah. There There's was. that 2 and Vita. Is it an early one? Um, not that. Not, not it really. doesn't matter. It's not going to be hit. They're not going to be hitting any other stretch goals. Unless they get Yasumi Matsuno on video saying, you know, it, it, and the thing is, like, like, this is not, I mean, he's, it's, there's no, like, fucking wool over our eyes or whatever he's involved in the project yeah and in fact in a recent emmy alexander Osmond was actually on a4 play recently and he was kind of talking about it apparently yasumi matsuno has been you know talking about this with play deck for years this isn't like a recent like collaboration from uh with the two you know so like they've been friends for a long time and they've been planning on doing this for a long time but for some reason they just didn't approach this kickstarter correctly you know they need to get the proper update if they want these these donations to you know to pick back up again. But I've never seen a Kickstarter go that fast out of the gate and just just stop that quickly. So it's just been a kind of a bummer for me because I was expecting it to hit a lot of these stretch goals. Yeah, you know. I don't blame you. It's really fucking yeah envisioned by Matsuno. You know, it's the world envisioned by him, and you know what? That was good enough for me. <laughs> I mean that. What? How much more? I mean, he he wasn't gonna be day to day. He wasn't gonna be fucking Kojima on Castlevania, but you know, it, he wasn't gonna be directing the game. He's not gonna be directing the game. I'm okay with that. Just get him on video, saying what he's gonna do, because I think that's what Japanese uh, fans need to see right now. Well, hopefully, mm-hmm. they do that. How much longer do they have? Uh, fourteen days. I believe. Oh, Jesus Christ! Okay. Well, here's here's hoping. I guess we'll maybe we'll, hopefully we'll have an update for next next week's show. That sucks. Anyways, um, I guess now we're gonna jump into community. Um, no one's gonna take us away into community in just a second. Before we do that, I just kind of want to say um, thank you guys for showing up last week for the roundtable. It was it was very helpful and um, productive, and we're gonna hopefully continue to do these periodically. Like I said at the beginning of the segment. Um, we're going to try and set aside some time tomorrow during subscriber game night to uh, address the community some more, get that dialogue going again. Um, and um, I also would like to say uh, Community Boy in chat, who has been an avid member of chat and community. and He is our community boy. He is a, he is our community boy. In fact, now he's more even more of a community boy, I suppose. He's going to be helping out on the site doing uh, video production with Chris Davis and Zach. Um, who's another staff member on the site, obviously, and hopefully that's going to help us out quite a bit in terms of producing video content faster and more frequently. So that's awesome. We're glad to have him on board, and uh, that, that's kind of, uh, I guess you could say that's kind of something that was born from last week's discussion that we had with the community. So we're looking forward to, oh yeah, and it's it's community, it happens to be Community Boy's birthday today. Jesus. Yeah, well, happy happy birthday. So talk about Woo. timing. It, so I mean, we just Happy got B-day. we just got him set up in, in in our staff chat and everything today. Which and the first thing I found out was it's his birthday. So it's his twenty first birthday, no less. And if I, he's probably not in chat anymore, but he was here a while ago and he was hammered. It looks like <laughs> so. Uh, that's uh, Happy birthday, community boy, Matthew. <laughs> if everyone will refer to him as his, yeah, as his real name be, occasionally, he'll always be CB to me. Yeah, I mean, community boy is such a catchy name. It's gonna be hard to. <laughs> To not call him Community Little Boy. I'm going to meet him in person. Community Boy a... was Chris Davis's dad. <laughs> <laughs> no! That, well, that would be terrible. Anyways, we're glad to have him on board. So, Nolan. What's up? It's time. It's that time. It's time? It's that time. It's time. Uh, hey, guys. It's hey. Time. It's time for the community. It's, uh, it's still January for a little while. <laughs> you say that every week. Yeah. And it's so uh, our, com- our subscriber of the month is NLH289210. Uh, and the game that he chose for us to play this month is Final Fantasy XII. Which no one has played 65 hours of. 67 hours. 67 hours, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, Brad's played a little bit of it. Uh, 
about 10 hours or something. Yeah. I don't know. But Brad is <laughs> you playing, should be ashamed of yourself. Brad is playing the international version. I'm playing the original release. I got the wrong email. I played Final Fantasy 13. Oh, mm. I'm sorry. But I did finish it. Oh, there you go. <laughs> uh, and so we will continue playing that probably until the month's over. Uh, which we will actually have a new subscriber of the month starting tomorrow evening. As soon as January ends, we're just going to stop playing 12. Oh no, I'm so what's going to happen is tomorrow I'm we're going to we're going to decide on a new subscriber of the month, but they they won't be subscriber of the month until February. Exactly. Oh, Fe- February. Weird sort of gray period. Yeah, between. where the the subscribers kind of stare at the, each other. The community is just going to be anarchy like the, the for old, three The days. old guys going out and the new guys coming in and the new guy is all hip and exciting and he's Oh my god, stamina. he's here. Yeah. How did subscriber get... of the month elect yeah. how did moving. community boy get here so fast was... um he's not here he's on the internet you said internet moves pretty quickly no i'm just like like he was gone and then we, t- we talked about him for a second and then all of a sudden he was like okay i'm here it's because you said community boy three times yep yeah i must, must that must be it oh they finally okay sorry they finally got yasumi matsuno on video uh-huh. oh. today i believe sweet so uh continue yeah moving on uh just real quick uh when was the last time we talked about donations? Did we, uh, did we talk about them last week? This, let's, we didn't talk about it last week. I don't remember the last time we brought them up. Because we did some it's weird shows. Weeks, yeah, we, we've had some... The, last week was Two our first weeks. like official show of the year. So we. So then I haven't done any of the January ones, probably. Probably no. or Or December. Like late December, Possibly probably. Not. Probably not. But real quick, let me go through some of those. Uh, we got on uh, December 27th... Uh, Kenneth B. Kenneth B. Kenneth Branna? Exactly. Beltram. Nice. Burroughs. Branna. Yeah, Crispy was the closest. Yes. Uh, gave us a donation. He said, Merry Late Christmas. Wow. So thank you for that, Kenneth. two days late. I'll that was him. his donation? Mm-hmm. Was saying Merry Late Christmas? He donated Christmas. Oh, that yeah. was him. Yes. I like that. He is the reason Christmas happened. We should do that every year. Uh, on January 1st, Jason K. donated. Mm, Kaczynski. Uh, Klondike Bar. No. <laughs> His name was Klondike Bar. Kangaroo. Uh, Nick was closest with Klondike. What? So Jason Klondike donated on January 1st. Uh, on January 2nd, we got another donation from Jason K. Uh, Klondike. K. Yes. There you go. Jason Klondike. <laughs> gonna it's going to be a real awkward one day when we actually Nap guess their last name. And silent be awkward K. Silent. Yeah, that's the thing. When we get it right one day, we've had this conversation before. You need before. to make sure you don't react. We've had this conversation before. <laughs> This exact conversation. I, don't, I just don't trust you, Nolan. He just doesn't. I think you're to gonna react. All guess. right, and then we got a donation on January 10th from Stephen B. Brown. Bernstein. Damn it! I just said Bears. Bears. <laughs> Stephen <laughs> Bears. Good one, Jack. You're Stephen knocking him out of the park. Yep. <laughs> Bears and Klondike Bar. It's actually Stephen Blum, the voice actor. Wow, oh, that was nice. <laughs> Uh, so thank you all for all of that. If any of you all would like to send us a donation, you can do it from the main page. Mm-hmm. They are much appreciated. They help us out a lot. What are you doing? He's derailing. He's looking at porn. No! There. They are really trying to make this thing succeed. This just came out today. Akihiko Yoshida is joining the core team at the base level and will be creating character artwork for Unsung Story. This guy. Bravely Default guy. The Yasumi Matsuno artist. Holy shit. That's great because the art that they showed before sucked. Hey, okay, Brad, that's sorry. not part of the yeah, yeah. community. Sorry. Yeah. They had that's white guys cool. drawing it, and I saw it. Cunt. I know, right? It looked right? bad. Horrible. Dude, right? What's the last Western RPG that looked fucking beautiful? In what way? Why do we all just... Well, like in, art, in an artistic way. Oh, okay. Artistically. Yeah. I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so moving on to chatter of the week. Da, 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 da. Chatter da, 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 of the week, and we're gonna. I think Community Boy is confused. He thinks we needed him week. for something. Um, oh, we always. We just him. said happy birthday and welcomed you to the staff and told everybody what you were gonna be doing. CB, go drink some water. You can, yeah, go pace yourself, bro. Drink some water and take some ibuprofen. Do not take Tylenol. Eat, eat maybe eat like a slice of bread. Or like five. He's or not six. a bird. Does it worry just, just you one. that just that break it up into pieces? We still have no idea who Community Boy actually is. But we his name is Matthew. Do. No, I, I mean like <laughs> like his other chat name that he probably used for years without. I know what it is. Uh, well, don't... Uh, oh, I don't, I want to know what it was. I was supposed, supposed to, I think I do too. But I was gonna make this fun and say, hey, it could be this person that we. It's hate. not near and far. No. 
I don't hate Mueller. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying, like, what if it's fucking BJ Slim? It's not. And we're like, no. <laughs> Sorry, that just hit me. Yeah. Continue. All right. Continue. So back to my chatter of the oh, week. Shit. Yay. Yay, chatter so for the week. So our first chatter of the week for this week is Pride Swine. Pride Swine in chat. Hmm. Pride Swine. Wait, he didn't give us his real name? Nope. His Fails. real name is Pride Swine. That's what it says on his birth certificate. He actually sent me a copy of his birth certificate. What? Pride Swine born in Murka. 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 <laughs> so he was born in Murka. M-U-R-I-K-A. Murka. Does his does his birth certificate back that up? It does. His birther choke. Anyway, birther choke. Joke. Oh, remember the, it was topical like four years ago. Anyway, <laughs> anyway. All right, a shameful secret. Once upon a time, many years ago, when I was a wee lad, video games were a large part of my daily life. The one day, then one day, when I was nine years old, I was introduced to this thing called the internet. As I was entering that age, and I never age, played games again. Entering that age of hormonal confusion, oh, no. I found myself with certain new urges. Oh no! And I understood that uh, I'm that not into incest, but this great <laughs> thing called the internet could help me in alleviating these urges. Oh no! Being rather limited in my greater understanding of the internet and of the world in general, I ended up combining those urges with my love of video games. Oh God! Let's just say that over time, Princess Peach is fucking no! hot. No. Became Princess Peach is fucking hot with a dick. <laughs> <laughs> and it, is, it has is only been that? downhill from there. Wait, he, he would Google Princess Peach is fucking hot. And as he learned more about the internet, he eventually started Googling Princess Peach is fucking hot with a dick. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. <laughs> I'm going to have to look that up. <laughs> I don't even know how to respond to that. He attached some examples. <laughs> Oh, All right, uh, Pride Swine's greatest gaming oh. achievement. I was always a Princess Zelda with a dick kind of person. <laughs> I was more of a Sheik with a dick. <laughs> oh, no, wait, but Sheik was supposed to be a guy, so that's actually gay. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> All right, oh, uh, greatest God. gaming achievement. Uh, it would have to be the... Uh, it would have to be 100 percenting Time Splitter's Future Perfect. With a dick. Unlocking all 150 multiplayer characters, it only took me five years. Fuck the cardboard cutout shoot, cutout shootout, and the cart racing. Monkey curling was cool though. Monkey curling? Mm. Yeah. I apparently don't know enough about time splitters. Neither do I. I know there are monkeys involved though. Time splitters was cool. Is this gonna be the with a dick show? <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be rat bag with a dick. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. oh, someone in chat just said it. Yeah, yeah. White yeah it, has to, it has to be rat bag is fucking hot with a dick. <laughs> sure. Google that rat bag with a dick. Oh, oh, my God. No, thank you. <laughs> all right, back to Pride Swine's top five oh, games of all time. All time. That'll Look. get you on the checklist. <laughs> Watch this. <laughs> <That's all right. laughs> Number five, Final Fantasy. Thirteen. Twelve. Thirteen. <laughs> Brad agrees with me. It's Seven. Mystic Quest. What the, Shut the fuck? Up. Up. <laughs> this guy's a troll. That's a shit game. No one likes that. Like a two-year-old can beat it. Number four, Empire Earth. It's an RTS. He spent a lot of time on. Yeah, I know. Number three, Mischief Makers. What? This is a weird list. It's a treasure game. Some number, people really like. Number it. two, Paper Mario: The Thousand Year Door. I never played that one. And number one. Time Splitters, Future Perfect. That makes sense. Time Splitters 2 is better, but I like Future Perfect. Future Perfect was really cool. Yeah. All right, and moving on. Pride Swine is up against Camille. With a dick. No. <laughs> uh, Zill666 in chat. Zill, he was in chat a while ago. I saw Zill's him. in chat quite often. Uh, uh, male from Poland. I'm not going to try and pronounce the city because <laughs> it's obviously Polish. Obviously. And Nolan doesn't speak Polish. It, it starts with a G and the next letter is a D. <laughs> what? Exactly. <laughs> like DG Tinderbox? Well, let me see. No, G D. Oh. It's like Let me see. It's right there. I can't see it. Gdanks. 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 Alright, moving on. He's from Gdanks. <laughs> 
So, Camille's shameful secret. Uh, my shameful secret is the fact that I bought War Z for full mm. price. I was watching gameplays from some guy. It was before this big scandal with War Z on Steam, and I didn't know how bad this game is. My reaction was, oh, this is an interesting game. Should be fine. How stupid I was. This so is probably stupid. my worst video game related purchase ever. I feel really bad that I supported this bunch of scammers. Man, I, I'm, I've heard so much about how bad this game is. Just, now I'm curious. Do, do people in Poland often, when yes. writing sentences, put a space before an exclamation point? I don't know if it's a because in all of his thing. sentences, uh, yeah, it, it, that's, when, that's a that's a racial stereotype. When I've ending in a period, there's no space. But all the ones that he ended with an exclamation point, there was always a space and then an exclamation point. Mm. Like it's when like a, Polish immigrants were first coming to this country and like Americans were ridiculing them, they're like, "Why don't you go put a space between the end of your word and the exclamation point?" Like that. <laughs> it's the thing. It's like a lot of people I work with, when ending a sentence in like a chat, they put two periods and it almost feels like like an ellipses like they'll say okay dot dot and i'm like are they like okay but they're all doing it so you think it's a thing reborn, you feel like you're left reborn says it might be a translator error if he was running that through a translator of some oh sort. that makes sense uh, okay i got you You were just racist no i was just asking you can't be racist if you're curious is that <laughs> <laughs> You can't be racist if you're curious. No one 2014. <laughs> All right. Um, oh Camille's uh, greatest gaming There's achievement. There's some truth to that, though. <laughs> like, if you want to find out the truth. <laughs> Maybe it's lame and not very much, but for me, my achievement is the number of beaten games. At this moment, it's 139 titles, mainly for the PC. Impressive the number of games he's completed. <laughs> Uh, Camille's <laughs> top five games of all time, and that sir makes you an asshole. Camille, 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 K A M I L. Okay, Camille. I was say, is this a girl? Camel. Not, it's not Camel. Okay. <laughs> it, well, I guess it could be Camel. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Good angst. Good angst. <laughs> Good top angst. five games of all time. Number five, Blood Rain. What? Mainly for <laughs> sentimental value. Uh, you know what he should play. Blood Rain uh, two, <laughs> the movie. no that that one they just released a few, what the... Betrayal Blood Rain Betrayal mm. the two D side scrolling, it's pretty good. Okay, number four two Gothic, four. the first one. Yes, mm. number three Saints Row four three two two. Wow. Number two series, Killing Floor. Series fans stick by two. And number one Legacy <laughs> of Cain Soul Reaver. It's a good list. Soul I Reaver. haven't played nearly enough of any of those, Soul but it's a good Reaver. solid list. Yeah. I'm saying if someone loves Saints Row so much that they're going to put it on, on the top five, on their top five, then it's going to be two, almost always. I, I never, I never finished two. But why? Because hardcore series fans love two. Because hmm. honestly, so, it's probably so, the best so Saints Row. Because game. I've never finished two, I only played maybe a couple hours of it. But I finished three and four. I'm not a hardcore fan. No, I'm saying you would never put one of those on your top ten list. If someone loves Saints top, Row so of much, all time, yes. Or, okay, yeah, not. Yeah, if someone loves Saints Row so much that the, that they're gonna name it their third favorite game of all time, there are not there are enough of the series purists to go with two. Is that is that probably, what you, yeah. yeah, probably yeah. So anyway, we have Pride Swine from America up against Camille I'm, from Gdansk. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it to Gdansk. And apparently, I just, just got quoted on shit. Chat says I did not say that in chat. That was on the podcast. You can't be racist. No, I, wait, curious. that's already on shit. Chat says yes. That's cheating. I like I like Princess Peach with the dick. So mm -hmm. I'm voting for um, Pride Swine. Whoever said that. So Pride Swine. He 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 was Pride saying Swine. he was saying that internet porn basically got him to the point where. He's a chick, he with was a chick with dicks, dude. Interested yeah. into into chicks with dicks. I don't think he's actually interested, just more interested. curious. He's yeah. not racist, he's just curious. <laughs> but on the... On the <laughs> he's, he's experimenting. Yeah. <laughs> on uh. the progression of, like, vices, though, it goes, like... This alcohol, is getting... This is getting... Weed, coke, LSD, heroin, chicks with dicks, then jail. <laughs> so, like... <laughs> 
Now that now you're just <laughs> we're we're writing a fine we're we're getting there's damaged. nothing Wait, wrong with jail the is a getting, vice now. Well, no, no, it's just a, the, that's where it ends up. Oh, you okay. go to jail. Oh, okay. We're getting dangerously <laughs> close to a it's not gay if you're curious joke. So let's it's please. Not gay let's, if you're curious. <laughs> nothing uh, you is wrong. There. You're nothing the only is one wrong there. or should be judged if it's done in the name of curiosity. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Now I feel like the word curious has to be worked into the show. I'm gonna try I'm gonna work on the show title. The curious rat bag with no, a dick. No, yeah, yeah, it should be <laughs> rat bags fucking hot with a dick space exclamation point curious. <laughs> no cu- I can't I can't pick there's so many good ones. Alright, alright. Uh so who's who's the winner? Vat Brad voted for Price Wine. I voted for Gdansk. Gdansk. Oh, so the Camille. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go for. I'm gonna go for Pride Swine because he put uh, Splinter or uh, Time Splitters on his list. I was also gonna give it to Pride Swine. So congratulations, Pride Swine. You are Chatter of the Week. No. Yay! Yay! What does he win? What does he win? He wins me doing that thing you used to do in high school, and you would make that face. I can do it backwards. With the with this, this guy. And you're like, blah, blah, blah. he's kind of retarded. <laughs> he's kind of retarded blah, blah, when you do him back. Wait, I've never done that. That you thing never done with the dick. One? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that thing's fucking hot with How a dick. You, wait, one more time. Start again. Yeah. Yeah. No. No, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Okay. No, you did too many things at once. You did too All right. So okay. moving on, we can talk about this after the show. Uh, if you would like to be one of the people who competes in Chatter of the Week, please be sure to send me an email, Nolan Hedstrom at fourplayernetwork.com. Include your name, your name in chat. Maybe a pronunciation if your name might be hard to pronounce. Where you're from, uh, your shameful secret, your greatest gaming achievement, and your top five games of all time. And you too might take home the win and be chatter of the week. How are we gonna? How are people who listen to this podcast at home on the go? Are, how are they gonna see this thing? Huh? I don't know. They have just have to know. It's it's the thing where you put your hands together and then you cross your ring fingers so they're on top of your middle finger, mm-hmm. and you take your index fingers and you put them on top of your ring finger, and then you. Pull it all together to where your thumbs make a mouth. It's like a little snake yeah, or something. Yeah, it's kind of like a snake. Yeah. Uh-huh. You can make him talk. Yeah. Hey, Brad. Uh-huh. Yours looks retarded. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't believe we're doing this in the show. All right, so I think it's time for I think it's time to wrap this shit up. I agree. We have some Broken Age to play after the after the show Ooh. on uh, new release Tuesday. So if you're watching us live, stick around for that. You can also find it on on uh, YouTube if you if you're not catching the show live. But let's go ahead and wrap up as we always do with the four player minute. Um, as always, remember to check out the website. It's fourplayernetwork.com. You can catch us tomorrow night on 4pp.tv starting around 7 o'clock for subscriber game night as well as a, uh, a an impromptu community roundtable or what did we call it last time? Community jam sesh, maybe? Yeah, I still call it the community sesh. roundtable. Community jam sesh. I like jam sesh. I like jam <laughs> sesh too. It's so much you less... You said jam shesh. Jam... I can't, damn, I can't say it. Jam shesh. Um, also, please find us on YouTube. Subscribe. Help us... Help. We're trying to We're trying to be a, a lot better with our video content, so please check it out. Leave comments. Let us know what you think. We're working really hard on it. And uh, find us on iTunes. If you if you don't catch the shows live, you can download them off iTunes, listen to them on the go. That way you won't miss a show, and you can always watch the us record it live. The search results aren't that bad. Did you type in Princess Peach with a dick? No. Rat bag with a dick. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Even the internet was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Internet's like, are you sure? <laughs> All right, so Brad's going to start us off, as always. Yes. Um, for, with the four-player minute. What's the four-player minute, Nick? Hype, sweat, <laughs> thank you, and fuck you of yes. the week. In that order. Yes. No. no. I think thank you and fuck you should be swapped. Yes. I don't know. My hype goes to Vagrant Story. I'm excited to play more Vagrant Story. I'm kind of deep diving back into that game. Deep diving. If you think Final Fantasy Tactics is intimidating, Jesus Christ, Vagrant Story is scary. (laughs) Absolutely scary. Um, But um, I think I'm going to do it. I think I'm going to finally beat this game. I'm excited. Uh, My sweat is Broken Age because I don't traditionally dig point-and-click adventure games. So let's see how... How um, how this one's gonna? Everything I've seen looks pretty great, but it is still an old school point and click adventure game, and that's not typically my genre. So, um, we'll see. My fuck you, no my my thank you, goes to the unsung story Kickstarter that just that just added all these beautiful wonderful things to the Kickstarter. All their like 
honestly, people kind of slowing down with their donations or their um, their contributions have actually, I think, made them have to make some choices that are really going to benefit us in the end, which is good. You know, sometimes you need to be a sweating a little bit for cool stuff to happen, like like Yoshida doing the uh, artwork, which is great. Also, released today was a story excerpt um, from Matsuno. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm curious if that's going to get translated and so I can read that. Um, and my fuck you goes to time. Because you know what? There are so many games I want to play right now. So many things I want to do and I don't have time to do any of them. Like, I, like, oh my god. Doing these, like, year in these, uh, polls, I get myself hyped to play, like, all of those games. And only one of them get chosen. Yeah. And I just play it for a couple hours or a few hours that one night. No, I want to play and finish all of those games. That's why I put them on the goddamn poll. And, and, I, and I boot them up and I test them out and I make sure they work. And I get so excited to play all these fucking games. I don't have time to play any of them. I don't. And it's fucking pisses me off. Also, fuck you to all the people voting 2001. All right. <laughs> That's all. Thank you. No. All right, uh, my four-player minute starts right now. My hype is for Bravely Default. I'm really excited about that game. Damn you. I know. Uh, I've been getting a lot of street passes on my DS for the game more recently, so my town's growing. And that just makes me excited to play the game. I don't know why, I'm just, but I am. Every time I get a little notification from Bravely Default, I'm like, yeah, my town. Um, my sweat uh, actually was also to Broken Age. I, I didn't back it. Uh, on Kickstarter, mm-hmm. I was really debating it, and I ended up just like not. Uh, and then I was kind of debating like, should I still buy? It? Like, I don't really know. And so obviously I didn't buy it because I don't own it. But uh, I had a lot of high hopes when I first heard about it. Uh, my fuck you goes to that goddamn tree in Dark Souls for its fucking hitbox being so goddamn big and making me get cursed from a creature the first time. So fuck that tree. Fuck the uh, And my thank you goes to. The PSC XS, whatever that emulator I'm using is for its... It's a really good emulator. Yeah, for its increase of frame rate so I can get through Final Fantasy XII really fucking quick. I could probably... I don't say I can finish it by the end of the month because that's not going to happen. Why are... What? I don't understand. I don't know. What? What, what do you don't understand? Like, I don't... Uh, what? Tell me. Use your words, Brad. Why? What? Is it... Uh, what? what? You've what? played it before, so yes. it's fine. I'm not fast-forwarding through story. I mean, like, what's the point of just getting through it just to get through it, you know? Well, it's because I haven't played it in so long, and I think the first time I played it, I had no understanding of what was going on in the story with the judges and yeah. this turmoil between the two nations, the, or the not two nations, the you know, several nations. My fuck you goes to the inability to set up a proper steal gambit. Why didn't they just fucking put <laughs> it yeah, in the yeah, game, yeah. you know? So, so what I started doing... Stop stealing when you get the item. What I started doing was I switched it to steal until their health is below yeah, like 70% or something that's exactly like that. That's exactly what I use. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. But so, sometimes, I mean, you know, yeah, he doesn't steal the item. Sometimes he steals more than once when he already has the item. And... Yeah. No, I know what you're saying. It's not perfect. There's a lot of things. I wish there was a lot of if-then statements in like the You always got to turn it off on bosses. Yeah. Know. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. But anyway. Yep. Cool. Crispy? <clears throat> okay. My hype goes to uh, playing some more Final Fantasy Tactics. Sweet. I'm actually really getting into. I'm steeping myself into the tactics mindset, and it. it I'm really excited to see where this adventure takes. I'm enjoying me. hearing about it through you. My I'm moving adventure. through you vicariously. Yes, yes. <laughs> Come along with me. We'll I will. journey. We'll journey together. It'll be Clouds glorious. in the game. I enjoyed reading your. I, I saw that. Yeah, I saw that. There's a little side quest mission you can get to get him. Something about a flower. Go figure. Uh, my sweat um, goes uh, to again Shadows of Mordor for the Nemesis system. I, let me be clear. I don't. I, I don't think I'm gonna hate this game. I'm definitely gonna play it when it comes out, and I'm actually really excited about it. I just feel like I'm beginning to feel like they gave this game too grandiose an introduction. Sure. That it may not live up to that, and that is going to kind of taint my. Like if I had just <laughs> played this game, paint. If I had just played this game without. <laughs> Knowing really anything about it, I'm sure it would be mind blowing. But now, if it doesn't end up being this huge open world like action RPG, I might, you know, it, it yeah. might it might seem smaller than that by comparison, you know. Gotcha. So I'm a little worried, but again, I I am really looking forward to seeing what they do, and we we really don't know anything about it yet for all well, our talk. Still pretty. That was actually all pre alpha footage too. Yeah. My uh, thank, my thank you or my. 
tip of the cap goes to uh, Dark Souls Ford's lore. I actually was watching a bunch of videos. You can find them on YouTube. It's a series called Prepare to Cry, and it basically like outlines backstory for all the different characters, the world, what like, just basically kind of putting everything in the game. Even even taking like game mechanics and why certain items work the way they do, and putting them in a lore context. And it's really, 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 really cool. Um, and he also started doing videos that kind of examine how. The, the story in Dark Souls 2 is going to tie into Dark Souls 1 if it is like an actual sequel or like what what, what the bridge is there. You, you know? know, I'm curious. Um, are either of y'all planning on going back to play through Demon Souls? I haven't. I, Probably not anytime yeah, soon. I don't know if I'm going to get to I it I find before. it strange. There's a lot of really hardcore Dark Souls fans that just don't give a shit about Demon well, Souls. Well, I don't think it's, it's it's that. I think it's they're very different games. Well, I mean, there's a lot of similarities, but I also think they're like Dark they're Souls, different. you'll probably like Demon Souls. I realize. Yeah. I realize. Yeah. I also know that... And they're kind of Demon Soulsing up Dark Souls they are. too. That Demon Souls is much more difficult than Dark Souls is what I've heard in a lot of cases. Oh, um, that's good. That, that, that bodes well for me. Demon yeah. Souls is harder or easier? Harder, I heard, in some cases. Uh, it's pretty hard. <laughs> Dark Souls is, I think, the harder game. But well, yeah. well, then in that case, I probably could go back and play it. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I don't think I'll have time. I want to play Dark Souls 2. So, yeah. I mean, maybe sometime in the future. I don't own Demon Souls. Maybe if nobody broadcasts on Saturday, if we're if we're down, I will pop in Dark Souls uh, on the feed for a few hours. Because I, I do want to... I do wanna... Hey, let me know if you do. I want to watch. You know what? You know what? Even better. Over. Even better. You should come over. Yeah. And you should coach me through it. It's just, it's just, oh, let's it's just do it. Let's all sit thing. around and watch Dark Souls. Yeah. I want to do that. It's a weird thing to me. It's like it's like if my favorite game of all time was Final Fantasy Tactics two, and <laughs> I never really played much Final Fantasy Tactics one. I probably would have. Well, I mean, I played. Yeah. I played Demon Souls. I don't know. Yeah, These but, are a little. I don't know. They, it's. But the, a lot of people who stopped in the middle of Demon Souls went on to love of Dark. Like Mike. He's like the yeah, biggest fucking true. Dark Souls well, fan think, in the world. I think he's the kind of person who fucking plays through the whole game with no shield, okay. which he does. The, the, and and he, he's, he's never, he's barely never scratched the surface of Demon's Souls. Souls. It doesn't make sense. I haven't me. played much Demon's Souls, so I can't really speak to that. I think part of it is just kind of more of a, like, part of why Dark Souls tends to be a little more beloved is because it's more of a gestalt experience. It's like, it's not just the system, it's not just the gameplay, but it's also the world and the environment. Everything Demon's about Souls it is, is really, really cool. I, I, just, I, I don't get that sense from Demon Souls. Like, I, I started playing it last year at one point, and after my first playthrough, nothing really about it kind of hooked me. I don't know. It's incredible. It has very memorable areas. Um, Okay, and my... Okay, so that was my thank you, my fuck you for the week. Actually, goes to Nolan for never being cursed in Dark Souls. How do you, how have you gotten as far as you have without getting cursed once? He walks into abysses. Go fuck yourself, bro. It's a Go trade-off. Go fuck yourself. I'm glad that you got cursed. I hope it sucks. I hope you get cursed many more times. Well, I've been cursed once before, but that was when a guy invaded me, and apparently he right might have been a hacker. Hole. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I ran off a cliff like hundreds of times in Demon Souls because I was trying to get the uh, the uh, server to become, or the, the world to become black affinity or whatever. Mm -hmm. They took that out of Dark Souls. That was weird. Uh, what is Where the, the game would get harder. The more you were sucking, yeah. Uh, so I wanted it to get harder because this enemy that I was farming would give me more souls. Uh, so I just kill myself over and over and over again. What a weird game! <laughs> what a weird Wait, little game. So if you die a lot, the game. game gets harder. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like it's a bit... demon souls, motherfucker. <laughs> All right, my four-player minute starts now. My hype, like Nolan, is bravely default. I love, love, love the visual style of that game and how nostalgic it feels. And it's probably the closest thing I'm gonna get to like a you know, traditional classic Final Fantasy experience. Um, and it just looks absolutely gorgeous. I'm super excited for it. My sweat is for Thief. <clears throat> well, at the same time, I'm very excited because it is the first high-profile next-gen release of the year, pretty much. Um, and I did, I do like the idea and the concepts behind it, but I'm still worried about the world structure and the linear, how linear it is. If it's going to be linear, I'm not entirely sure. Thief so is, only time will tell. I think at this point it could go either way. Thief is a fucking feeling, dude. You <laughs> get when you're hiding in the dark and you're waiting. I want that, and it's, and it's fucking exciting. And I want that feeling. And I, I, I really, really, really liked Human Re or Deus Ex: Human Revolution, and I'm hoping that they can kind of give Thief the same treatment. But at this point, it could go either way. Um, my thank you goes to WB and Monolith for. Instead of choosing to promote 
um, Middle Earth with like a, just a you know boring cinematic trailer. They took the time to put together a eight minute long gameplay demonstration, which is kind of reminiscent of like rock, what Rockstar has been doing with their with their games, like with Ellie Noir and Red Dead, where they're kind of introducing specific aspects of the game through like narration and explanation and stuff, which I think is a far better way to promote games regardless of what the end result ends up being. It makes it far more interesting, in my opinion. So, that was pretty cool. Um, and my fuck you of the week goes to IDOS, or Square Enix, IDOS, whatever, um, for Tomb Raider Defin- Definitive Edition. Not because I think it's a bad game, because I, I played it last night on the feed. Um, I went out and bought it, just because I loved Tomb Raider a lot. It was on my top ten of last year, and I have a PS4, and I wasn't slightly new on my PS4, and wanted to see what the differences were. And it looks good. It looks pretty damn good. It play- It really plays well. The PS4 controller still feels excellent, so that's that's great. Is the trust but, effect stuff? But it's sixty goddamn dollars. Mm-hmm. That's so that's stupid. That's ridiculous, dude. Mm-hmm. I mean, the P, the hey, definitive hey, edition. Do you know how you much can... Tomb Raider is on sale for right now? I think how much? Ten dollars on PC, right? No, I think on consoles. Like like the, like the PC version of Tomb Raider has been like ten dollars on various sales, like halfway that, through the that should have been thirty dollars yeah no i agree forty dollars at the absolute most and even that was kind of a crime fucking dollars so fuck you for having the goal to charge full price for a game that's been out for a year that really it doesn't have anything significantly added to it i mean it looks better it does look better um no they redid her face or Laura, something Laura, yeah they did they did redo her face why would she, they do that she looks more like she does in the opening cutscene of the game like the voice actress. and she looks a little bit more like the voice actor voice actress and she looks fine. I don't she like look, facial she looks good. She looks good either way. It's not, she looks different, but not so different that it doesn't look like it doesn't feel like you're playing an entirely new character. It's just weird. Um, it's a little weird, but hey, um, it's 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 if you don't if you haven't played Tomb Raider and you have a PS4 or an Xbox One and you're looking to play it, I would recommend it. Uh, but sixty bo- bucks both, is ridiculous. Uh, both Best Buy and Amazon have it on PS on Xbox and PS3 for ten dollars. Yeah. Damn. Oh, it's, it says today only, so... Yeah. It'll probably... I mean, what? It'll jump back up to 20 or 30? Probably. Yeah. So, still, it's kind of a crime. Fuck you for doing that, but hey. Um, but yeah, that's gonna that's gonna be a wrap, guys. Thank you guys for joining us. One final thank you of the week. Thank you to that dude that said Nick looks like Ryder Strong. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great moment. You, you, I, I think I thought about that a long time ago. I think when... when before I was on the show, I had already thought about I don't even know who that is, but... I, yes, you do! Sean! Sean Hunter? Yeah. Sean Hunter. Who's Sean Hunter? Boy Meets World? Boy Meets oh, World. I never watched Bro. Boy Meets World. What? Sean Where was Hunt. your childhood? It's okay, dude. Sean Hunt, Hunter was cool as shit. He was the cool kid. Yeah. Sweet. He got in trouble a lot. So it's not an insult. It's a compliment. I, Trust I, me. I know who... I can picture his face because we had this conversation before, but I forgot what show he was from. Whatever. Anyways, thanks for watching. 4 Also... Please, guys, we really, really love reading all these uh, Shorty Award nominations. It's really awesome. Mm-hmm. Whether we win or not, it's cool to to be recognized and for you guys to to do this for us. So, obviously, thank you very much. And if you haven't nominated for us, nominated us yet, please go do it. We'd really appreciate it. Uh, the link to do that will be in the show notes over at fourplayernetwork.com once this po- podcast is posted. And I'm sure someone in chat will post the link right now. Yeah, well, it, there's a delay. I know, I know. I was, that was the joke, Brad. Um, and of course, stick around. We're going to be playing Broken Age here in a few minutes, so don't go anywhere. We'll see you next week. Bye, guys. Bye. Peace. Bye. So long. Farewell. I'll be the same goodbye. Got it.